hello, 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 everybody. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello. Wherever you're tuning in from, good, good, good day. Good day. Good day. Or good night. <laughs> Sleep tight. Um, salutations. <laughs> salutations is a good one. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you've stumbled your way here, uh, welcome to Chasing Tales. We are a tabletop role-playing game network um, where we host lots of different tabletop role-playing games. And today we have a special event. We don't usually stream on a Tuesday night, and we don't usually stream with these lovely people over here. I mean, Rowan you might recognize from around the place. But uh, yeah, we, we've got something fun today, and that is because we are playing uh, a one-shot from an up-and-coming Kickstarter. Um, uh, the Kickstarter is for a source book called What a Lovely Adventure uh, that contains eight LGBTQIA plus uh, one-shots for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, um, and also mechanics on how to do romance in like... Um, I guess a more mechanical way. I, 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 uh, yeah. Um, they launch on Thursday, so in two days' time, if you head over to Transparent Games' uh, channels, I've linked what the, a, a little bit about them and where you can find them. If you hop on there, you'll be able to back their Kickstarter, grab yourself a copy of this book, especially if you end up enjoying today. If you enjoy the adventure we play today, you can get the fully polished, all art worked out version of what we're about to play. So that would be fun. Um, also, thank you for following Paladin Hulk. Appreciate that. Um, so today I will quickly introduce everybody and then we will dive into a little bit of Sword Cross Lovers, um, an adventure written by Sebastian Yue. I don't know that I'm pronouncing Sebastian's surname correctly. I apologize if it was incorrect. Um, uh, so, yes, um, before I dive into that, uh, at Chasing Tales here we are always thanking the Cognitive Merchant because our channel would not exist without their glorious help and support. So if you ever need handmade leather, tabletop role-playing game accessories, also in vegan leather and fully customizable, uh, head over to Cognitive Merchant's website for dice bags, dice cups, and LARP gear, and all sorts of things like that. So yeah, ch check them out, there are, there are like friends of the stream. So, that means I can move on to introducing our wonderful, wonderful guests today. Hello, the six of you. Uh, first up, I'm going to do it in, like, reading comprehension order. I'm going to say hi to Alexander. Hello. Hello. How are you, how are you doing today? Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Alexander. Uh, I'm a... Uh, I'm completely blanking now. Uh, That's okay. We have I have I have the bot command, so the bot command yeah. can do the writing, and you can just be like, "Hi, I'm me." Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, I I go by the freebies, uh, biceps, uh, bisexual, and biomedical engineering. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, I'm uh, I've DM'd a lot of stuff. I've written uh, for homebrew for uh, one thing called the Book of Lost Magic Cut, now on DM's Guild. Um, and um, get that plug, get that plug. We all worked hard on plug. that book. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy to be back on Chasing Tales. It's a great group of people. It's wonderful to have you back. I was very excited when I was like, I'm doing a big gay one shot. Who wants in? And this friendly person who'd been on a charity stream on my channel wanted to come back. That was very flattering, so thank you. Um, oh, next up we have Diane. Um, I've just realised I have Diane's captions all all gone. Um, oh, no, I know why. It's because you set them to transparent. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Uh, you're muted. I can't hear you. But your captions are working. I and haven't had my microphone open, so... Anyway, yes, hi, I'm Diane. I also sometimes play tabletop stuff on the internet whenever I get the chance, which is not as often as I'd like to, but oh well. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy to be joining this, especially because when I saw Prue saying, hey, we have this lovely queer one-shot thing, let's... who wants to be a part of it? I mean, uh, I, I like to think that I was hopefully the first one who responded, because it took me about ten seconds. Yes, uh, you, were, you were very quick on the draw. I was very impressed. Yeah. Um... But yeah, um... Other than tabletops online, I basically I, I stream sometimes myself. I'm this month fundraising for the American Association for Can Cancer Research, 
which is a thing that I will be doing until the end of the month. And if if all goes well, barring any major illnesses, I will be doing another uh, spice a next Tuesday, which is basically I'm going to stream for like six or seven hours, and as long as people donate, I will eat chilies and habaneros and other spicy things just oh, because. No. <laughs> I love spicy things, so if I can do it for charity and see if I can test my endurance at the same time, there you go. So, yeah, that that's that's my thing. Wonderful. Spice and video games. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um... <laughs> Uh, next up, we have the lovely Sean. Hi, Sean. Nice to have you Hi. back at a table with me. Yeah, so me and Prue played in our first ever D&D campaign together back in those uh, university years. Um, sorry for having no functioning camera, so I'm just going to be a pretty anime boy for today. Um, but yeah. Uh, Never apologise I... for that. Never, ever <laughs> apologise. You are truly living the dream. <laughs> but yeah, so... Um, I'm playing, I'll be playing uh, a character I actually played with Prue back in the day. Um, I am a researcher by day, um, nerd by night. I only get paid for one of those, I'll let you guess which. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm running out of steam here, so let's move on to the That's next cool, question. perfect. Um, uh, Zeke, hello, welcome to Chasing hello. Tales. Nice to have you. Hi. How are you doing I'm today? Glad I'm, I'm doing all right, I'm doing all right. Uh, my name is Zeke Stewart, uh, they, them. Um, I am a like a streamer and producer on um, Dice Drinks and Drama. We have a show every Wednesday, and then Monday mornings we have a, a new show if you want to join us there. Uh, and um, I'm a bartender. I make lots of mixology drinks. That's my fun thing. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like I should have done like, hey, fun fact about everybody, please. Oh, but you kind of gave yeah, them anyway. We got the three Bs, we yeah. got the spicy food, we got the researcher mm -hmm. by day, we got the mixologist. Um, so next up is Lex. Hi, Lex. Hello, welcome. Hi, How are you? I'm Lex. Um, uh, on Twitter, I'm at Call Me They. I make some YouTube videos on characters and character backstories for Fifth Edition. Um, I also make homebrew for fifth edition and i just launched my patreon this month so that's been fun um fun facts uh uh, mm, ooh, uh i got nothing this, this is my oh this is Those my are second all pretty fun i gotta say <laughs> uh this is only my second time being on a twitch stream of any kind for D, &D so like ooh, i am very yeah. grateful that you're here was your first ooh. one paradise it was. I played the weird character Harm, who was a tiefling. Oh shoot! I kept forgetting to do everybody's uh, shoutouts in the chat. Hey, if you want to find Sean, that's Ow. Sean. If you want to find Zeke, that's Zeke. If you want to find Lex, <laughs> that's Lex. <laughs> um, uh, you got uh, it for me. <laughs> and uh, f finally, of sweet baby Rowan, how are you, oh. darling? I am well. If you know Chasing Tales, you know me. Uh, but if you don't, I'm Rowan. Uh, I'm one of the, the recurring cast over here of Chasing Tales, and I'm also a writer with Witch and Craft Games. Uh, I write TTRPGs, I play TTRPGs, I love TTRPGs. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at RowanMay underscore. I nearly forgot my own name then. Um, and fun fact about me, uh, today, at half past ten in the morning, I watched Silence of the Lambs for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. About me. Great morning choice. I had to yeah. watch it for my lecture. It was... it was a film. Uh, that's it. <laughs> um, I will say, as this is a queer stream, big power to Jodie Foster on that one. Mm -hmm. Voice like buttered noodles. She's great. <laughs> Powerful, powerful woman. Okay, cool. That is everybody. Oh, I'm Prue. Hi, I'm GMing today. <laughs> yeah. I'm DMing today. Yeah, who are you? Um, You're a little uh, uh, I, I'm Online. That's where most people hear about me from. Uh, I'm around on Discords and things a lot as well. Uh, I designed my first ever game. It fits on a business card. Maybe I'm getting it printed. Who knows? How exciting, huh? Um, it's called Magic Rat. It's about being a rat that can do magic. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not publicly, but I will be running that as a treat to myself for my birthday. I'm, I'm very, it. very flattered. 
It's the first I... thing I ever released into the world, and everyone's like, this is really cool, and I'm like, everybody just really wanted to be a magic rat, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that in a tab open in Chrome since you put it up, and I haven't actually, like, read it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still flattered. Any 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 clicks are good clicks. I can tell not a lot of yeah. people necessarily read it because they message me being like, I want to play this with you, and I'm like, specifically says play it in a room with someone and there's a there's a pandemic going. <laughs> <Yep>. um, <laughs> uh, I do like that it also requires you to carry change in your pockets. So yeah, I <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um uh it also means that if you're someone that carries a lot of change, you are immediately significantly advantaged in the game, which I find very fun. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let's play a, let's play a different game. Let's play Dungeons and Dragons. Ah. Um, so, um, Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Me? Uh, do I do character intros first? Yes, that's what I'm gonna do. If you could very quickly say your character name, race, and class. That would be perfect. Um, and uh, we will go back the way we came. Rowan, who are you bringing to the table tonight? Today, I am bringing you the ray of sunshine that is Cal of House Ironward. Uh, he's a Hebe, uh, Earth Ganassi Paladin uh, of the Oath of the Crown. Perfect, thank you. Uh, and Lex, who've, who've you got? I am playing the lovely half elven wizorcerer uh, <laughs> Dubois Dubois the name so nice he chose it twice wonderful <laughs> I still love that tagline that's a good name um, okay. cool uh, Zeke yes I'm playing Safarin Quace a uh, little ray of sass and, and judgment um, a, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry undead barbarian wonderful thank you um, and Sean? I'm playing uh, Wittenbolt, but most people just call them Wit, uh, the Lawmaster Tiefling Wizard. Wonderful, thanks. Uh, Diane? Oh, I'm thanks playing... Thanks for cheering five bits, Meg. We love you. Yeah, thank you, Meg. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm playing uh, Sulak Winterworm, that is Worm with a Y, because we're fancy around here, who is a Goliath Rogue, a thief specifically, whose specialty is camouflage. Wonderful. Because when you're eight feet tall, you can't hide, but you can blend. <laughs> yeah, and that Goliath skin tone is very good against rocks and things, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, last but not least, Alexander. I am playing Falling Feather, the Stormkeeper Ranger, uh, Kenku. So he has a little flock of ravens following this little raven boy. That's beautiful. I love it. Gorgeous. Yeah. You're bringing such wonderful people. Also, Lex, thank you for subscribing. It means yeah. a lot to us. Yeah. It's very, yeah, very you. kind of you. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, I feel all embarrassed. Um, so let's dive in to sword cross lovers oh i have that on the wrong screen one second <laughs> running digital D, D is just good window management um mm -hmm. so we, <laughs> we oh do we i'm saying we but do we um toop, 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 toop. <laughs> that, that was me finding the right piece of music in this playlist of only seven songs. It shouldn't have been that hard. I have done that so many times. <laughs> um, uh, Prince Rosinante stared in shock at the open vault. The grey flagstones were scuffed. There was a rusty brown stain on the ground and the final lock on the door was shattered. Worst of all, Heartsinger, the magic sword intended as a gift to his fiance, Kylorian, was gone. Hot tears spilled from Rosinante's eyes and he wiped them away furiously. 
He'd been planning this wedding for months, and there was no way he could cancel it now. Rocinante clenched his fist. He would tear the world to pieces to find that sword, if that's what it took. And as for the thief, well, there would be hell to pay when they were caught. And we flash forward to the present day, and we open on a scene in the royal palace where in the throne room uh, one figure sits in one of the thrones the other one empty as another paces back and forth and the six of you are stu stood or sitting around on chairs that have been offered to you um it, prince rosinante is pacing around furiously while his fiance the prince kylorian sits with an elbow resting on the arm of his throne his head in his hands Kalurian has this shoulder-length dark brown hair, mid-green skin and little tusks poking up from his lower lip, along with a beautifully clipped beard. Um, whereas Prince Rocinante, uh, where's his description written down? Um, uh, 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 is apparently a, a human rather than a half orc like his affianced um beautifully coiffed blonde hair um and uh gorgeous and expensive looking brocading on his long tunic as he sweeps from side to side it swirls around him um and uh, can I have everybody's passive perceptions, please? Oh. Oh. Oh, we um, got a hydrate redeemed, which means 50. if you want to take a sippy, please take a sippy. Passive oh, yeah. Perception. Just nine. Just, yeah, basic I, ten. Nothing. I have oh. the staggering, uh, staggeringly high passive perception of ten. Oh, it's so sad going from my regular, oh, no. my regular, oh, no. my regular twenty to a ten. <laughs> Oh no. I don't think we prepared for this. <laughs> to being a mortal. <laughs> so we we did we have two that were higher than a fourteen? There? I got fifteen. You yeah. got a fi oh, we, we, Okay, we nice. we only had the one. Okay. So uh falling feather, you hear um your the little feathers around your ears ruffling. Um ears? Is ears the right word for a bird? I'm not sure. Um, uh, you hear Rocinante muttering to himself, It must have been the Umbarians. I knew they were never going to keep their peace. And then the rest of you hear as his voice crescendos as he continues, They can't be trusted. And now they've gone out of their way to humiliate me. I won't let them have the advantage. Not this time. We'll strike first. We are going to war. And as... You all watch, kind of hands grip round your seats. Uh, 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 Kylorian uh, kind of drops his head from his hands and gets up to approach his uh, his affianced, um, uh, trying to offer some calming words. Um, is there anything anyone would like to do at this juncture, or would you like to let this couple play out? Oh yes, falling um, feather. Falling feather would like to get up. Um, and have mechanically it's the mage hand cantrip but really uh a couple of the ravens uh fly down mm -hmm. and rest on the prince's shoulders and falling feathers mimics exactly in his voice keep peace um he he kind of bats at them in his impatience but then hearing what they say his face softens slightly, his brow, his, his perfectly manicured brows, may I also add. Still furrowed, still clearly quite stressed out, but you've taken him from shouting volume to talking volume. Um, is there anyone else that would like to interject at this point? Um, so, uh, after the the little uh, swarm of crows mutter, keep their peace and he kind of bats them away but seems cowed 
um, uh, Kylurian, uh, uh, kind of steps down from the dais their thrones are on and uh, takes his partner's hand in his um, and says softly I there's no proof yet that it was the Umbarians maybe you should just take a deep breath like we've practiced and count to five and just oh, calm down and Rosinante raises his eyebrows and looks indignant I am the crown prince, and I will not have anyone ruin our special day and potentially threaten the peace of the realm. And he pulls his hands back and swirls his cloak around him and storms out the room. And then seconds later, uh, you hear a thump and a crash of a cabinet behind you and outburst uh, a couple scrolls and a chest that begin floating across the room in his wake. Um, and I need everybody to make a deck saving throw. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy me. Cal rolled a nine. Oh, Cal. Cal. I rolled a four for a total of nine. <laughs> nine as well. Wow, look at all these that nines. Three nines. Nine I rolled nine nine is a fat and juicy natural one. Oh, oh nice! No. Oh, I'm, not, oh, no. I'm not the only one that puts me up to a five total. Oh no! Uh, I think that puts me at a four total. <laughs> four. Yeah. Wonderful failures! Great, I love that. Oh, Great roll. Get them all out of the way now. Uh, Sean, what did you get? Uh, sorry, what did Wit get? Six. A six. Oh no! Yes. So every failure yes. all around. This is a good game of D and D. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so as um. As he kind of storms from the room uh, and these like scrolls and chests and just these things he's clearly taking with him in his sulk kind of smash about the room. Uh, you kind of get clicked around the head and knocked on the shoulders as you try and duck out the way, but you're not fast enough. You didn't know the prince's temper could be so quickly riled, then calm, then riled again. Um, and you will take five bludgeoning damage. Oh, ow. <laughs> ow. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, and, uh... Don't do that to me. <laughs> All good weddings start with a flogging. Thank you so much. I'm so <laughs> glad I came here. I have this a negative wonderful. constitution modifier. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, Kylerian rubs his temples at, uh, Zelfar and uh, Zelfar and's little quip, and is like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, look, please excuse Ross. Please, you have my uh, soon-to-be royal apologies. Um, as you can imagine, this is a very intense and stressful time for us, and I do understand that you are the folks on the guest list, Ross." hand-picked to be the ones that were most likely to get this sword returned to us. Uh, is that true? Yes, that would be correct. Okay, oh, well, I'm I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I am so, so sorry for his temper and the items he smacked about. I'm, I've never seen him in a temper quite like this. Um, look, the problem is, is... We can track items within the castle walls and not outside them uh, with our magics we have here. And wherever the sword is, well, it's not here. Um, yeah, uh, is, is, is there any more information I can give you? I mean, I'd, I'm happy to help in any way I can. I don't want to start any conspiracy theories so early in our investigation, but... Is there but someone who would perhaps to... benefit? Yes, I'm about. Is there someone who would perhaps benefit from the prince's uh, plans to wed being spoiled? Perhaps someone who would be looking to lay the blame on another nation? Ah, I, I see you're not from around here. Um, well, although there are no kind of secondary claims to the throne, he he's the only direct heir after his brother was lost in the war, and his uh, three mothers have since rescinded their crown to him anyway. Um, it's it's just him and me, really. So, so 
foul play of that aspect, I, I don't think, but it is true what he says. This, this nation, uh, our proud land of Domilux is always on a, uh, I'll call it shaky footing with the Umbarians, so it could be the folks from their empire seek to foil this and, you know, it be the catalyst toward war, but somehow I don't think so. You see, I'm not from either of these countries. I get to bring this third perspective and uh, it seems, well, it just seems rather bold when we've had such a tentative peace for a while to steal a sword. But I guess perhaps it could not be the them. work of a nation. Not the work of a nation, but an individual, perhaps. Um Might I just ask here, um how much is this item worth? Is this something that's potential value to collectors? Does someone have monetary gain from it, perhaps? Well <laughs> it would be rather priceless. It was <sighs> and he and his skin flushes like a darker, kind of redder shade of green. Um, uh, it was handcrafted specifically for me with all sorts of fantastical enchantments. Um, if you want to know more about the sword, you can speak to our artificer or the uh, folks that actually helped craft such a masterwork weapon um, down at... Um, <clears throat> he has the little uh, Apple loading icon on his forehead. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, meanwhile, just has the, you know the gold coins in her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, down at uh, Metal Artisan Forges, uh, they go by Metal AF for short. Um, they they forged it, and then our artificers worked some extra magic on it. I, I heard it was excellent quality when it arrived, though it, it arrived late. Um, but, so all, all I'm hearing is, as you're describing this, someone would pay a shitload of money to get their hands on it. <laughs> yes, uh, mm. uh, someone but would pay a shitload. Have, there's no such thing as priceless love. <laughs> but then would have an entire army coming after them, so that doesn't really seem like a smart idea to me. Mm. Um, for which, is, which is why I suggested way? that it was an individual work. Um, mm -hmm. Your, your Kenku friend is asking about his uh, late arrival. Now, I don't know the ins and outs. I've been sorting floral arrangements and making sure our doublets are perfectly tailored. There was a whole mix-up with shoe sizes that I had to deal with. So the sword... Well, also, I don't get to see the sword till the wedding day. So what I know about the sword, I've heard secondhand. Um... <laughs> If you want to know more about that, as I said, maybe the the, the palace artificer can help, or the folks down at Metal AF. Did you I... happen to take on any new staff for the wedding? There's been different folks passing in and out of the palace, but, you know, we, we had a, a couple security clearances here and there. We relied on caterers and folks we know we trusted so I mean I can get you lists of them if you like but it's quite there's uh, hundreds of people to interview and we're hoping to get the sword back by uh, tomorrow for the wedding so let's keep it simple do you have a record of the actual who delivered the sword oh I yeah um we do um and, I mean, if you're interested in, like, its arrival and its departure, the guard on duty last night uh, that went missing, uh, when the sword went missing, uh, the guard herself is uh, on duty down in the dungeons right now, so you can go and speak to her if you think both arrival and departure are important, I guess. Dungeon. Yeah, yeah, all right, who's... Before we go, I just have mm -hmm. a little question. Honey, I, two beautiful, wonderful people marrying. Very important, well, very noble thank, question, thank though. Thank you. Yeah. Um, have you guys, like, met before this? Were you, like, friends, or is this, like, an arranged thing? Oh, no. We've been, uh... 
well, I, um, 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 Kylo Ren looks like he's about to launch into a story and then, like, thinks better of it and is like, yeah, we've been, uh, we've, we've been partners for, uh, going on six years now, so, you know, I'm really excited to finally tie the knot and, you know, spend the rest of my life with him. Well, yeah. don't you worry, my lord. We will find what has been stolen and return it to you. We will ensure that this day is the greatest day for you and the prince. You have my word as a gentleman. And I'll do a very big bow and probably nearly fall over. <sighs> well, and he like kind of catches you as you begin to fall and like stands you upright. And he's got very firm but gentle hands. And it's like, oh, um, well, oh, I recognize you. You're an... You're an iron ward, aren't you? I recognize. Yes. yes. Ah, yeah. Uh, looks very, very excited. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, I'm glad that your family can uh, join us. Well, hopefully for the wedding. I mean, oh, we'll indeed. see. <laughs> we will. Believe me, you have my word that we will all be there and it will go off without a hitch. Pun well, not intended. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> thank you. Um, all of you seem raring to go. Wedding singer, um, I know we walked you into this. I heard you had arcane magics. Do you? Um, Dubois has for sure just been, like, tuning a lyre or something this whole time <laughs> and has not heard a single word and looks like a hmm? Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah, Falling Feather. Falling like. Feather uh, looks at the instrument and just does all the notes in order. Aww. You're He's you're a little sharp, team. but good. So is your instrument, just saying. That's why I'm tuning it. <laughs> I can brief brief him if need be. Ah well, thank you. That's good to know. Uh uh Wittgenbold was it? Wh Wittgenbold? Sorry, I've only Please please just call me. Wait. It's easier for everyone. Thank you. Oh, before you leave, though, um, I can certainly help you with um, some oh, uh, maps and little documents. They, like, uh, you know, I, I, I would conduct myself in the investigation with you. I'd, I'd actually be quite excited, but it seems I have a war to prevent and hopefully a wedding to attend, so... Um, uh, here, take these, and he, like, um, goes, uh, to the cabinet that, like, got blasted open, and, uh, reaches for a little, uh, 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 docket of papers in, like, a beautiful leatherwork cover, um, and, uh, he kind of pulls out a, a map of the castle, um, with, uh, the locations that he mentioned, as in, um, where the sword was stolen from, the dungeon itself, and the artificer's office. He, he, he taps them, and as he taps each, they kind of glow and light up. Um, and then uh, underneath, he's like, and here is a more zoomed out perspective if you realize you need to head cityward. And he hands you a map of the city itself, as well as like a crude sketch of the sword. It's not especially artistic, um, but the guard is distinctly heart shaped, with the counter guards looking like bars of music. And the drawing bears the name Heartsinger underneath. Um, and then finally he kind of shakes out a little pouch and he opens it and pulls out a beautiful lilac crystal with one very smooth face. Um, this as well is a communication crystal. Basically, you can get in touch with me, with me whenever you need to. Um, I, I keep a similar one on my person and he taps his pocket and you hear his uh, rings clink against something in there. Um, so, you know, if, if you do need my assistance or you need to report back any information, if you find the sword, you can get hold of me, um, just, you know, to help aid you in your investigation. And, oh goodness, I would be so grateful if you returned that sword to us. It would mean the world to me and Ross and hopefully calm Ross down a lot. Uh, we got a, we got a redeem from uh, Diane. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, a hydrate redeem, sorry. Um. Uh, my hot chocolate's gone cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cold chocolate, delicious. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
Dubois speaks up and just says, well, to get paid to do the singing at the wedding thing, there has to be a wedding, so... Oh, and you definitely get a bonus for helping. Ab absolutely. Um, the, the royal family will not take lightly this is just a mere favour. You are venturers of repute. We'd bestow both our honours and our financial rewards on you. Yeah, but I want to do the singing part. Oh, That's yeah, of part. course, you still do the singing part. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we hired Dubois Dubois for a reason, you know? <laughs> we just we just mutters one. <laughs> what was that, Sean? Sorry. We just mutters one track mind. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, and like uh, uh, is there anything anyone else would like to do? Uh, ask Kylery in anything or in the throne room. Uh, my familiar is actually meowing and for something the second I mute he needs something so I'm going to be right back to deal with my cat okay that's cool please go ahead oh wow I can see it <laughs> vicious uh, <laughs> he's been here the whole time <laughs> yeah. uh, following Spever's little friends he's using mage hand which is just sending out the little crows and ravens mm -hmm. just pick up all the stuff that was knocked over and put it back <laughs> oh obviously that's Obviously, they can't nice. do all the heavy stuff because uh, <laughs> it's only five pounds, and they are in fact birds. Uh, Cal, so Cal will lend a hand with the heavier stuff, seeing um, and is clanking all around the chamber. <laughs> and his armor that is slightly too big will uh, help with the heavier stuff. Falling Fever will elbow Cal, look up at him because Falling Fever is only like four and a half feet, and mm -hmm. say, "Deep breath." <laughs> <laughs> Clank. <laughs> Sirloc is in almost physical pain hearing this complete lack of any stealth whatsoever. <laughs> but it's you know just kind of inching towards where you know the the, the way out, basically trying to find the right moment to just go and question this guard who was supposedly on duty, so... Mm -hmm. yeah. Looking at everyone else and going... Oh yeah, if you're, if you're reaching out, like, One just... One second. Um, I think we should at least look around in the room it was stolen from, maybe? Yes. Oh, maybe? yes, we should go to the vault, of leave. course. Oh, you I have here. Oh, Yeah, you sorry. know, vault, I, I like going... Yeah, let, let's go to the vault, let's... Yeah, hmm? I'm mm. with vault, you. Vault. Um, uh... Uh, and as you all head out the room, uh, Kylerian kind of comes with you and is like, oh, I must see to my, uh, to my love and make sure he's, uh, doing okay. Um, and he kind of, uh, pulls the doors to the throne room close behind him and parts ways from you. And you follow this little map of the palace, um, uh, uh, kind of down one level, uh, uh, and then, like, directly underneath the throne room in this kind of um ah let's say two levels down uh but what would be directly under the throne room two levels below um you come to this uh 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 long marble corridor um and the sound of your feet on the stone rings out like gunshots when you reach the end of this corridor you see the vault just as it was when Hartsinger was reported missing. Um, there's uh, 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 an, a door that has now been left open because the item inside is apparently gone. Um, and a beautiful vaulted ceiling and like a, a there's like a plinth in the middle with a cushion on it. The cushion has nothing else on it. It's, a, it's a, an, a, an ominously empty cushion. Um, what would you like is to there, do? Is there anything else in the vault other than the splint and the empty cushion? Um, there are some very nice ornate lanterns hanging from uh, from hooks on the marble walls. I'm saying it's I'm gonna say it's like an octagonal room, and on each of the pillars at the edge of the octagon, there are some really nice ornate lanterns lighting the room. 
So there's nothing of value here. Well, but you could sell a lantern for like a good gold piece of pop, I reckon. They're pretty nice lanterns. So there's nothing of value in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Sulak basically came in here trying to see if maybe she can pick up a little extra payment on the way, but... Uh, ah, I see, I see. Unfortunately, yeah, not right now. Um, unfortunate. In that case, just gonna, you know, do the actual job. <laughs> yeah. um, Look around and see if, with maybe her thiefy ways, she can spot, like, you know, what's a good way in, what's maybe a possible way out. Great. Is there a way to do this without killing a guard or something? And I'm sorry, I've kept <laughs> the Kenku from speaking this whole time, so. <laughs> the irony of keeping a Kenku from speaking. Um, <laughs> uh, he's. Uh, following Fever is going to crouch on the ground, uh, sort of look around, and he's going to look for signs of the whoever the thief was, and uh, if it's a human or a goblinoid that did it, thanks to my favorite enemy, I would have advantage on that check. So, specifically humans or humanoids? Sorry. Humans and goblins. Okay. I, I, I have to pick the specific. Answer. Yes, yes, cool. Um, so, uh, can I have investigation checks from both of you that have said you're poking around? Um, and... I already rolled mine. It is a natural one. <gasps> no! Oh, so, um, what is wrong with us? I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm exiling my Lama D20 and I'm going to get uh, a different one now. <laughs> um, would, would Wit be able to cast the tech magic and then also investigate at the same time or is that too much multitasking? Um, I, I will say cast the detect magic to start with and then I will go to Cal because Cal's hand was up. Uh, Cal was also gonna uh, gonna cast detect magic so oh, like okay. yeah. I was fine. also going to cast detect magic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a 19 investigation. Wonderful. Hey, nice. Great. Um, so we'll cover the 19 investigation once I'm sure I know what everyone else is doing. So Selfarin, Dubois, Dubois, yeah, no, Cal. Blocking around. Cool. Um, with, oh, sorry. with everyone doing detect magic, um, I was going to have my cat familiar, which I forgot to mention because I'm a genius, um, give me the help action to maybe just do a perception check or investigation whichever is yeah. more appropriate sure did we just lose yeah. someone Sorry. we are losing sean oh no <laughs> what part you can't see anything okay hey <laughs> sean is are you okay sean yeah. <gasps> sean? oh no we can't oh, hear sean? you I'm sorry oh okay cool <laughs> there we go hey um hello hi we can hello? hear you it's all good mm -hmm. we can hear you now can you hear sorry, us did you did you hear what i said before my interview yeah, i can hear you yeah, Did you, you hear what I said before my internet? You're casting a detect magic? Yes, uh, would it be too much multitasking to investigate while I walk around with detect magic? Uh, you're casting. No, but you might want to wait and see. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, what you find with your detect magic before you ask me for rolls. Because things may happen. Sure. Um, so okay. we have a perception check from Dubois Dubois. We have various investigation checks and help actions from other people. Um, so, uh, 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 yeah, Rowan and, sorry, uh, Cal and Zelfarin, do, do you two want to be working together on anything? Because Zelfarin was like, I'm just wandering around. I'm happy to help, let, let that be like a help action. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. Is the, uh, yeah. is the, uh, the guard anywhere around here? No, the we... guard, the guard is in a okay. slightly separate area, um, in a, 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 in the, in the dungeon that you will have passed by to get here. And then this was behind, like, various locked doors that are mm -hmm. now open and you've walked through. Yeah. In, in that case, I will, I will also, I'll, uh, I mean, a lot of investigation checks have been happening, so mm -hmm. I'll, Cal is just, like, rocking excitedly on his feet trying to look for something to do but knowing there isn't that much to do well so i will say like... this um i believe the our lovely kenku was looking around inside the vault you could look outside at the doors if you yeah, want i'll go i'll go and take a look at the doors and like at the because their locks were broken yes um and and uh this is me being cheeky but i did mention my family are the caretakers of an iron mine and know a little bit about metals so I'll go have a look at locks and doors nice. and things. Sweet. You can do that with advantage. Um, Dubois, hey, Dubois, hey, your hey. hand was up. 
So with advantage on perception, I got two nat ones. <gasps> oh no! What's oh, going my on? God. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> one in four hundred chance. There's, there's someone rolling worse than me. This is amazing. Who I cursed the stream? Who cursed the stream? Um. Uh. So. Frankly, this is homophobic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So. I will go through. So, so Wit Wit and Guest has. Uh, so Wit has out the the spell book and is reciting, and you know the the tiefling that you all have now teamed up with is in, is uh, reciting some kind of magical enchantment. Um, and uh, the Kenku um, and the Goliath are poking around. The Kenku down at ground level. Uh, the Goliath looking up and around at stuff. Um, and uh, Zalfarin and Cal slowly promenade back down the corridor, looking at doors, whilst uh, Dubois Dubois uh, leans lazily back, strumming on the harp, just kind of looking looking around, poorly, half-lidded eyes, barely, barely here. <laughs> um, Meg, Meg has given you a crit success, Lex, because you oh. deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the way the way we run that on Chasing Tales is the next time you roll something, it's automatically a critical success. Yeah, um, amazing, perfect. So, uh... um, what happens is the detect magic. You notice the remnants of an alarm spell, kind of Ooh. tingling. You know, like like there was one that has been cast here and is currently deactivated, but. You know that abjuration magic shimmers, and you recognize it immediately as the alarm spell. Um, and then uh, falling feather um, with your really high check, you find a little heap of dust inside the vault um, that most people would miss because uh, it's grey dust against a white and grey marble floor. And as you kind of point this out, uh, wit, you turn and look at it, and you see the sparklings of magic around the edges. Um, mm. And you can make an Arcana check if you want. Yes. Please. Go ahead. Is that is that's a okay? Cool. Um, let's see Arcana. There it is. That's a nat twenty. Oh, hey. heck yeah! Um, you kind of put your finger in the dust and rub it, and hmm, this was definitely a spell scroll that has now been used up. Whoever broke in here used magic to aid them but perhaps isn't a spellcaster themselves um right uh and then uh what was the investigation check on the doors uh i rolled a dirty 20. oh nice the filthy um, filthy 20. Mm, just so sick in it. <laughs> <laughs> the gross 20. greasy, um, greasy. <laughs> uh, hold on with your total for that is a 28. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> More master baby. Um, it's the rogue of the of the wizard class. Rogue. Rogue. <laughs> only only for smart. If you if I try and like acrobatics, I'm gonna fall on my face. Um. Oh, we got a hydrate yeah. from our friend Tal. If people have a sip, yeah. want to sip. Tal. Yeah, Tal. I was um, wondering where you got to. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna also say with that you all of the locks the, there were five a series of five complex manual locks four of them completely smooth unbroken are fine all the locks except the one nearest the bottom remain in perfect working order mm -hmm. um yeah um i'm also gonna say uh uh with the investigation check, because you rolled really high Falling Feather, and Cal, you've also managed to roll high in this setting, the three lots of your eyes kind of trained closer to the ground. Um, you see on the stonework floor some scuffing uh, near near the vault and a, uh, and a dark reddish-brown stain. Um, and because you got higher than a 17, um, you, you can deduce that this is a trap door. Oh. So, uh, just to go over 
the four locks at the like top of the door are completely in fine and working shape and the bottom one is broken? Yes. Got it. Um, and that's all we have found in here. Uh, the dust of a spell scroll, uh, a trap door, one broken lock, and um, a and the remnants of an alarm spell. Do I know what the spell scroll was like? What spell was on, or like what school of magic the scroll was from? I'm gonna take a look, but I think not. It would seem if there's a remnant of an alarm spell, then something might have dispelled that. Mm. I was going to say that seems like the best logical leap. Um, Yes. Here. I mean, what would we, we just say? Well, when alarm is triggered, it emits a loud noise. So it might be worth looking around to see if anyone heard the noise. If not, we might be able to assume that either one, they are complicit, or two, uh, whoever broke in here covered their track. Well, that that being said, um, checking the locks, four of them are in fine working order, and only one is broken. So either. There are four locks that just happen to be unlocked on a vault door, which seems strange. Or they were able to unlock four of them, and not the fifth. Can I...? Okay, so well, with the alarm spell, if it got dispelled, then it wouldn't have gone off anyway. Mm. Um, as for the locks, to try and make up for my earlier failures, uh, I would like to have, because Sulak is specialized as a thief, Mm. In, in the road, I would like to have her actually take a look at the locks and see if, uh, if there's any sign that they were picked, or basically if there's anything that can be deduced in terms of has anything been done to these locks? Yeah. Or um, are they just roll? As they were? Roll an investigation with those. If you're not proficient with investigation, you may add your proficiency bonus because you are a thief. Excellent. <sighs> <laughs> it's not a natural one. No. It's a natural, natural two. No, um, it, 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 it's not great. Um, it is. It's an eight total. An eight total. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, at this at this point, you aren't sure. You know, the bottom one was brute forced, but that's as you know as much as Khaled also deduced. I'm um. sorry. Has the presence of the trap door been shared with everyone? Uh, I mean, you are one of the people that spotted it, so... Yeah. Uh, Falling Fever is going to try, try to open the trap door and see where it leads. Cool. Um, uh, so you see that it just goes kind of down, and then it looks like it curves out uh, to what would be the west? And then it just disappears because it's it's curving, so you can't see around the curve right. of the corridor. It's not so, a corridor; it's more like a rough-hewn tunnel that, like, someone at about five five could comfortably stand in. Just to double check, where is the trap door in comparison to the um where the sword was? I missed that where the trap door oh, was. Oh, so so if we imagine it's an octagonal room with a dais in the middle, one of the marble slabs okay. uh, kind of behind the dais uh, actually lifts up and is a trap door and you can tell because, okay. they can tell because there was like some scuff marks and some dark red stain kind of <clears throat> leaking around it. Gotcha. Okay, I just want to make sure that I had that right. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, can you tell if the door is forced from the inside or outside? Hmm, that's interesting. Um... Uh, I would say you can tell it was. Um, force from the outside. So they came in this way. Whether they came out this way, you don't have evidence of that. Uh, this might be kind of gross question. Can I tell what is that? Can I tell what that? dark reddish stain is <laughs> yes uh i would say a nature check <laughs> medicine <laughs> we'll do medicine medicine makes more sense <laughs> uh, it's raspberry jam <laughs> uh that's in that 20 for total 23 yeah. <laughs> we'll do it um it is 
I am happy for all of you, but also fuck you. It is. <laughs> it is. I'm gonna say with a nat twenty, you know it's a negative humanoid blood. <laughs> Following Fever, like a couple of the of, of his birds, like flock over, and he's like, <clears throat> and then he looks at it, and uh, I'm trying to think. He makes a sound of like a knife sliding out, and points to it, and then points to like his palm to try like, and that's how he's trying to communicate what it is. Okay. Uh, do uh, finally is no longer distracted by his own music. He goes, <laughs> ah, nice find. And he takes his cat familiar, which is like, it's like a pitch black cat, but he dressed it up in like bright pink leather jacket. And oh just goes, my God. In you go. And he throws the cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can your cat please make a dexterity uh, saving throw? Splat the cat. Oh wait, no. It, um, it do I have a natural. <laughs> you have a natural okay. twenty. So, familiars can communi <laughs> telepathically communicate, right? Yes. So, you're all listening, and kind of staring down at this dark hole that that you've just seen Dubois Dubois throw his cat down into. Um, um, all I have my mage hand, uh, Ravens. Just all like start sort of like. Hacking at Dubois Dubois for this animal cruelty. Um, also, Diane, was your hand raised? Oh, no. Oh, no, I was cool. Just adjusting something. Oh, cool. I was just checking. <laughs> um, and then you hear a <laughs> of something that sounds like arrows firing or darts whizzing by. Oh. And, a <laughs> and in your head, Dubois Dubois, you hear a you should have seen that shit. I was doing Matrix backflips. <laughs> I didn't get hit by a single arrow. Way's clear now, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to say this now. I don't give a shit about anything in this adventure other than Dubois Dubois' cat. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I care about now. Fallen Fever is going to make an exception to his rule and kidnap this cat. <laughs> <laughs> so I, just, I love that you guys can't not say his full name. <laughs> Dubois Dubois. It was so nice to say it twice. Dubois Dubois. <laughs> yeah. Like, how can you just say Dubois, Dubois. No, see. I, I can't even just say a single one. It has to be Dubois Dubois. <laughs> it doesn't feel right otherwise. It feels like half a word. <laughs> It'd be like if you called me anything but the full fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so in the interest of speeding things along, are you going to head down the tunnel? Are you going to investigate somewhere else? Uh, down the tunnel, down the tunnel I, for sure. Yeah, I, I let feel them like know the tunnel is safe. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if an opportunity presents itself, rather than being like, well, that was cool, I'm wandering off to do something else, we should like pursue that line of questions. <laughs> uh, wait. Oh. How many of us can actually fit down it? Oh, good question. Um, the, the, <laughs> the characters taller than 5'5 five five will have to crouch, but you will fit, and you'll have to go single file. Okay. Uh, Unless you're very, very, very skinty. Does it, does it look like this this tunnel is actually part of the initial construction, or does it seem like it was added later? As in, like, was it built with the vault, hmm. or was someone Roll building me a history it? check. That seems is like an a, architecture check. Is this um. a short... Is this a, do we have a Shawshank situation on our hands right <laughs> yeah. now? Yeah. Oh, I, oh, hang on. I rolled something better than shit. <laughs> Yeah. Could I also roll history, or is it just one person per roll that we're doing? We can. You can offer advantage. That's what we'll say. Okay. Yeah. Have advantage. Woo! I will take advantage. Ooh. I will roll that with my Cthulhu die. Um, that's even better. That's a nineteen total. A nineteen. Um, in what? So, it looks like someone who knew what they were doing so someone that knows their way around say a set of tools probably dug this um but it doesn't look like it's part of the construction 
here. It doesn't it doesn't have the same hallmarks. It looks like it's also relatively fresh. Even actually some of the soil of the walls is a bit damp. That could be rainwater coming through. It could be fresh dig. Um, yeah. So this is not a... Yeah, not a part of it. So yeah, Sulak is just going to have a quick look around, comparing this to everyone else, and then turn to the group and just go... Yeah, someone put that in later to get to here. If you, if you feel it, put your hands on it, you know, you feel that cold, you feel that damp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not. So, yeah, it's very them, moist. So someone someone was planning this for a while then, to take the whole effort to dig under a vault, to break in from yeah, the other and, side. If you know a wedding is going to happen, and you know there's going to be a really fancy sword that you can sell for a boatload of gold, seems well... worth digging at all. Mm. So... How um, public is the idea of the whole magic sword for wedding thing? Like, um, is so it... this is a family tradition that if you okay. have either been here before or you were reading up, if you've went to this like royal family's Wikipedia page, it would be on there that they handcraft <laughs> special priceless swords for each wedding ceremony. And then what happens is when someone new marries into the family, they swear their love and their kind of like fealty to the nation as well on that sword and they keep that sword okay. with them by their side throughout the whole so that's not reign. like deep insider knowledge that's pretty common knowledge it's pretty common knowledge knowing where okay. the sword would necessarily be kept you know people know there are vaults but not everyone knows the blueprints of the castle yeah um Zalfarin. Okay. yeah i was just um, seeing if this had to be an inside job or not okay. so i just I also want to make sure that the biggest thing will happen with this, because there's not like a new alliance, other than the war starting, of course, war, if they person gets accused. But um the end the they could not be married, yes? Yes. This would this would mean they would have to delay at least delay their wedding. And this has been like the wedding of the decade. The prince is finally mm -hmm. marrying his beau. So from both an emotional and actual <laughs> like political standpoint, it is bad if you can't get this back, yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. No worries. So, mm -hmm. seeing how this tunnel is very cramped and Sulak is much, much taller, mm -hmm. she is in fact going to keep going with the initial plan of go talk to the guard and just going to look at everyone else and go, yeah, you can fit. I'm going to go interrogate. Uh, we'll meet on the other side. I mean, come with you. I would You're... prefer not to be dirty today. I mean, I already am rotting constantly but you know <laughs> i try to keep down the smell that's that's just a matter of being it's fine come along mm -hmm. fantastic Thank so i'm babysitting is what you're telling me <laughs> got it i would never insinuate anything got it in so. one <laughs> <laughs> oh, my so... let me let, let me just get my <clears throat> my, my 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 interrogating goliath voice on yeah let's do this falling <laughs> <laughs> well, fever points to himself and says babysitting <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks, down, looks down at Falling Feather and goes, yes, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm going to say that Cal, Ironwood, Dubois, Dubois, Wit, and Falling Feather are heading down the tunnel, and we have Zelfarin and Sulak going to talk to the guard. So we will do um, uh, 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 tunnel babies first. Um, okay. So this little Kenku, uh, a hunched over uh tiefling just so that uh, uh, their horns don't scrape the ceiling. The very elegantly dressed Dubois Dubois with his uh, his cat uh, prowling at his heels and sweet uh, just happy to be here baby boy Iron Ward. Um, <laughs> I'm, clank I'm clanking up the rear. Is, is cla yeah, is clanking, <laughs> clanking up the rear as you head down this dank, dark tunnel. And you're walking for five minutes, and then ten, and then that drags into fifteen, and then you hear something. Mm. Can I get perception checks from everybody, please? I dare. Uh, Nineteen. Thirteen. Nine. Natural twenty. Hey! Wow. Who you're got doing the natural twenty? Well, I might as well be using a coin at this point. Do what? Do what? Do what? 
And a 19 from falling further. Okay, great. Nine from where, where, where is just trying not to get their clothes dirty? So, yeah, I'm, I'm also going to say maybe Cal and Wit are at the back so they don't hear yeah. this because you're in single file. But Falling Feather, you hear the clank of metal. Not me. And then... Uh, oh, and Dubois, you hear this too. Um, you hear the clank of metal that isn't Cal, yes. And then <laughs> the hammer sound of, of a large... Uh, of a large hammer hitting another piece of metal and then the puff of bellows and slowly you piece together the two of you the sounds of a blacksmith and with your nat 20 Dubois Dubois you hear a voice uh, calling out um, uh, uh, can't believe the sword's gone missing hope it doesn't affect my business metal AF were set for life making that sword <laughs> and we will end that little scene there because it took you like 15 minutes to walk that distance and i'm sorry there isn't much more to do right this second but um <laughs> but we will jump back to our uh, goliath and uh undead friend <clears throat> in the palace and you head you wind back to kind of the dungeon entryway to this vault system uh and you see um, uh, the dungeon is chilly and the air is dry and you see a person sitting on the end of a single bed in a cell staring at the ground, her hands folded in her lap. Um, her light brown hair kind of falls forward over her face and um, two little ears uh, give away that she's uh, a half-elf um, and she's kind of kneading her hands together in her lap. Um, uh, her, her sword resting on the bed beside her. As we approach, Silak is gonna turn to. I, I'm so sorry, I'm bad with character names. It's fine, it's uh, Zephyrin. Zephyrin, that's the one. Mm -hmm. I, I remember there was a Z at the start. <laughs> Give me like five more sessions and I'll remember it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna turn to Zephyrin and just go, So, you take lead. I'm gonna come in later. I've I've got an idea. Just trust me on this, all right? Um, and okay. I would like to actually roll stealth for Sulak. She's just going to try to blend in and see if... Go ahead. Know... Roll me a stealth. That sounds great. Um, also, thank you for raiding Andrew. And thank you for the hydrate Ooh. towel. If people want to hydrate, feel free. What'd you get? Hey, can I have advantage just for no reason whatsoever? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a one shot. Your this this cell is made of stone. You're a stone Goliath from the mountains. Have advantage. <laughs> that was Just take it. Everyone's the initial roll would have been a twelve with advantage. Oh. Twenty-one. A twenty-one. So, so uh, so far, and you kind of see Sulak in the corner of your eye, and then not. She's just melted into the shadows. And you are now kind of alone, apart from this uh, half-elven woman sat on the edge of this single bed. Okay. Hey there. How's it going? It seems like you're having a rough day, huh? Oh, um, I was gonna make a Yorkshire. What do Yorkshire people sound like? That's bloody hell. Prue, you are, Pru, you are a Yorkshire woman. Yeah, I was just gonna make her more Come Yorkshire. On. Um, she looks she looks up at you and her hair falls back and you see there's a huge gash going across her forehead and splitting one eyebrow and her uh, and she has like wide uh, deep set pale blue eyes um uh, the, well oh um hi I'm Kiena uh, who might you be Zafarin just a friend of the crown. Am I in more I'm sorry. trouble? I'm getting more flowers. Uh, no, no, no. Of course not. Of course not. You're not. In, I mean, I don't know. Are you, are you in trouble? You tell me. I don't. Um, I don't. I don't rightly know. Um, I. I'm kind of the person that meant the sword went missing, so I'm a bit worried that I'm gonna be in in trouble. Cause, cause you see, Prince Rocinante, he's a he's a he's a good prince. That that lad. But, 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 well, he's a nice person, and, uh, but, but he's a, he's a hopeless romantic, and he overreacts when things don't go according to plan, and so, you know, 
romantic mix with plans being foiled and it's his wedding day tomorrow. Well, I'm just... I'm chuffing worried I'm gonna be in a chuffing lot of trouble. Yeah, sounds like you're right, chuffed. Yeah. Um, so why don't we, like, why don't you tell me what happened? Like, what, do you remember much of it? Um, well, and she kind of reaches up and touches her forehead and then pulls her hand away and... Oh, well, with this, I, uh, <laughs> I can't be too clear on the details, but, uh, it must have been around four or five in the morning, because that, like, dawn light was seeping in through the, through the windows down here, and, and, and then someone came out of nowhere, I'd say about five, two, and just struck me right across the face, I, I, I knocked me out cold, in a few seconds I got before I was sunken into darkness, well... I saw a, a black balaclava, which I know doesn't help you, but 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 I could see their eyes underneath were scared. They was wearing all all black, and then I think, and I might just be crazy, but I think I saw a red tail. But I'm not sure if that was just the blood kind of getting everywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, right. uh, do you know what they hit you with? Also, hype train. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks, Zeke. Zeke doing want to the interrupt, producing. But... <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Just, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to say thank you for an anonymous gifter to gifting a sub to me. That was very kind. And then one D Cairo with a raid, and then Lex with five gifted subs. Thank you, Lex, uh, so much. Lu Looper with a gift sub. We um, thank really you for the hype appreciate it. Hype, 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 hype. I hope you're enjoying this inve <laughs> hypeful, horrendous investigation -y. Well, you're all doing a good job. I just feel bad for this poor guard woman. That's what I mean by um, horrendous. Uh, Lex, you've just been given advantage on your next roll by Tal. <laughs> uh, and you got given a another critical success by amateurs class for the gift sub. Oh my um, god. <laughs> uh, and thank you for the bits, Maggie. Um... So, yeah, uh, uh, dialing back into the conversation, um, mm -hmm. she, she says she maybe saw a tail, and then she kind of looks back down at hands and then looks up at you pleadingly and is like, well, when I woke up, the vault were wide open and Heart Singer were gone and, oh, I, I want to keep my job, I do, I like it here, the benefits are good, the dental plan's amazing. Uh, and just, you know, if you could get that sword back, mister, I'd be so grateful. Yeah, your teeth do look amazing. Oh, well, thanks. Um, yeah. um, at this point, uh, Sulak okay. just kind of leans in out of the shadows. <laughs> Jesus! Oh, oh my, oh my goodness! <laughs> Relax, it's just me. Who are you? Oh, me? Who's me? Oh, hey. What are you I'm doing here? I'm with the investigation. Oh! Just a friendly neighborhood Goliath around here. Okay, okay, you, so, you... So, let me know, where were your keys when all this happened? Are you doing a good cop, bad cop thing? Because I get that, I understand that, I, yeah. I have no, no I'm just doing a good Goliath sort of thing. Oh, well... Oh, just good... Okay, we're both good. Me... Alright, this is actually... Oh, really... yeah, I'm really good. My keys were right. dropped right by me. Um, uh... Uh, you know, maybe they fell out my pocket or off my belt loop. It seems unlikely. The metal's all still intact, but you know. I've got my keys right here and she jangles them. I was initially gonna do the whole bad threatening oh. thing, but you seem like you're really having a bad day and I really don't yeah. want to contribute to that anymore. So, actually, I can just drop this voice. It's fine. Let's just talk like normal people. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is much nicer. Thank you. Uh, uh. Yeah. So, you saw a tail. Uh, you got whacked. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to see that, by the way. I hope it heals. I mean, Thank got... you. I'm sure they've got clerics on staff, right? Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, you know, it's like a pockered scar that looks like it's clearly been closed by magic, but is, like, gonna need a bit of natural... She might need a long rest. All right. <laughs> yeah, she hasn't had a long rest. No. Oh, no. Um, it's like... Okay, so, Red, um, they got it. Well, we, we think we might know how they got out, at least, but it's... It doesn't... Are, right? Do we have... Do So you have all of your keys, yeah? On you? And, yeah. Um, 
All four of You're them. You're not missing just one of them? No. But we carry hmm. four. Yeah, we carry four four keys, and then all the keys to the cells, of course. Uh, you said you carry four keys. The vault has five locks. Yeah, so it's a way of, like... Well, it's to try and stop everything going wrong, right? So the princes, they only have one copy of the final key each. Okay, that explains something. So your four keys were used for the first four locks, and that's why they had to brute force the last one. Oh, you use a lot of well smart, yeah. Yeah, I guess. I guess we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. That doesn't... Mm -hmm. th that leaves a couple of things unexplained, but it helps with parts. Great, I think. I'm gonna have to find the others, because... I think we have a good amount of knowledge, or whatever. I think we're fine. Uh, look, you rest up, get better. If you can... Can you think of any more identifying information about... Who that's it, that's you? all I got. That's all I got, I'm so sorry. Do you know anyone with a red tail? Not personally, no. Have you heard of anyone with a red tail? I mean, some tieflings and dragonborns and such live in the city, you know, as usual for a place in this realm. Um, uh, some of them have got tails. Uh, what other races have got tails? Some people even just wear them for fun, you know? It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I have a tail at home myself. Um, oh. So, I do have a question, though. Uh, did you happen to know... You're in the castle much more than I am. Do you happen to know if there have ever been, I don't know, some sort of quiet scandals with the uh, princes? Um, like, friends, close friends, maybe too close friends, you know what I'm I saying? I mean, sometimes they have pretty raucous parties uh, where I don't think everybody keeps their clothes on, but that's not for me to talk about. Um, uh, otherwise, no, they're just so in love. They are so in love. I... Right. I... I don't, I don't pay much attention to the, the petty arguments at court. In all, in all honesty, they send me to sleep. Alright, well, thanks so much. Um, get oh. yourself a cup of tea. Or oh. we'll send someone with a yeah. cup of tea or something. Thanks. I don't know if they're allowed to get yourself a cup. We'll have a look into this, and well, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll save the bad cup voice for when we need it. Cool. And with that, you two head out of the cell, and we have uh, four people in a tunnel deep underground, their ears kind of <laughs> pressed up against the wall, listening to forge sounds. Um, and uh, that is where we will take a break. And we'll come oh. back for the second half. Um, I might whiz you through some of the stuff there just so that we can keep to time. Um, but we will take... Um, I'm going to have to nip the break a bit shorter unless uh, you really need that half hour. But can I say we take a 15 minute break? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. oh, that's fine. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. Great. So we're going to head on a 15 minute break now. Um, so come back. Join us in 15 minutes. We are playing Transparent Games is... Uh, one of the one shots from their Kickstarter that's launching on Thursday. So make sure you check them out if you're enjoying the story because then you can play it yourself. Um, and we will see you in 15 minutes. Goodbye, everybody. Hello, hello, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Chasing Tales, or welcome if you joined in the break. Um, we are currently <laughs> playing a one shot uh, called uh, Sword Crossed Lovers from. What a lovely adventure, which will soon be on Kickstarter. Uh, it's by Transparent Games. So if you end up enjoying what we're saying today, go check that out because it launches on Thursday. That is basically the synopsis of what we're doing here. Big, gay, D&D, &D, 5e, one shot. These six are trying to save the royal wedding. They have uncovered a few clues and they've snuck down a secret tunnel to find a uh, blacksmith noises. Ooh! Um, I'm a narrative genius. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Um, uh, so, uh, we will jump right back into the action. Um, uh, so, we see a, 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 a little Kenku and a, a, our beautiful wedding singer, uh, ears kind of pricked, listening to the sounds of a forge coming from somewhere above. 
uh, whilst uh, Cal, Iron Ward, and uh, Wit, the wizard, uh, stand in the back, kind of looking a little nonplussed. What would you like to do? Uh, you've reached, like, the end, and there is, like, some wooden planking above you, by the way. There's some rough wooden planks above your heads. I turn to everyone and go, I think we found a forge. Uh, Amazing. Question. Did we, did we hear uh, the prince say Metal Aya? Yes. I say Metal Aya. <laughs> I am, thank you. <laughs> as, as, as wonderful as it is, can we please move in? I'm starting to get cramps in my back. Uh, oh, wait, is it locked? Uh, you can try and push. Um, I'm going to try to push as quietly as possible. So you reach up your black feathered fingers and then your musculature and fingertips underneath and it's, something's on top of it. Something really heavy. Um, stealth. You might not be able to stealth this up, but you could strength this up. I look at Cow. <laughs> <laughs> you have to shuffle around. Yeah, Cow. Cow. Hello? I oh. make a sound of like a breaking of wood. And okay. I, and look up. Pow! <laughs> Pow! <laughs> yeah, uh, excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, just like push past um, in clanking armor and a, like a nice cloak that gets tangled on someone. <laughs> okay. 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 Whew. Hmm. And like ready myself, and I'm gonna attempt. <laughs> Cal's gonna attempt to like superhero punch it. Sweet. Um, I'm gonna even though this is like technically an attack roll, just for the sake of DCs and stuff, I've got worked out in my head. Can you just roll a strength check? But you could do it with advantage because because of the moral support you're being given by your friends. Oh. <laughs> Spring oh, break. Man. I believe in you. <laughs> uh, that's a maths. Someone help me. 17 plus 4. 21? 21. 21. 21. That one. You did it. Um, I did it. And as you punch up, you make a splint. There's like a quiet splintering sound, and around your uh, gauntleted fist, uh, wood chips fall and get caught in your hair. And then the whole thing kind of wobbles and oh. shifts, and you manage to catch it with your fingers, and you kind of punch and then push and it mm -hmm. all slides to one side um and uh you hear this like creaking and groaning as you clearly push uh, a crate of something um over in one direction and you now have like an open hole and immediately hot air and the smell of molten iron and hot coals uh uh, burst down to you, and all of you can now hear the sounds of an operating forge. Well, um, I mean, what about can we get a message to the others? This I feels... think uh, the 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 uh, prince was the only one with the communication stone, right? Yeah, that's true. No. Uh, how Actually, how far know. are we down the tunnel again? You said it was like a 15 minute walk, it right? It is a 15 minute walk, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Me message isn't gonna reach. Uh... <laughs> oh, I mean, we never said where we were going after we questioned the guards, so... Do we assume we went to catch up with the others, or not? I'm, I'm happy for you to say, hey look, we went and spoke to the guard, and then we... Uh, went down the tunnel, and so they can join you in ten minutes. Yeah, okay. We can have ten okay. minutes of whatever you do next. You can sit in the bottom of this tunnel for ten minutes and wait if you wish. Um, <laughs> oh, can I can I summon my familiar while we're down here? Because uh, that takes ten minutes. Um, you absolutely can cast that, and that means you can be on lookout for when the others arrive. Um, yeah. So you start burning incense in a little brazier and uh, reading from your spell book again. Um, uh, Falling Feather had a oh, hand up. Oh, oh, oh. I am going to get out some rope mm -hmm. and cast the snare spell in front of 
the little hole we just made. Mm -hmm. uh, the snare spell, uh, just to be, just like get up there, put, put it there, sneak back down. The snare spell, I need to look up the exact wording because I have not played a ranger before. <laughs> um, it is a, uh, it's a five foot radius circle on the ground, so just put right in front of there. Uh, yep. It's nearly invisible, requiring an investigation check against my spell save DC mm -hmm. of 13. And when someone gets in there, they have to make a dex save or just be hoistered and yep. hanging So basically, bumps. if anyone comes up to the edge of the hole, uh, they have to make a check or they'll be like hanging from the ceiling of the forge upside down yep. over the hole. <laughs> cool. I got you. That's wonderful. Perfect. Um, so you two are casting these spells. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Diane, I see your hand up. Yeah, I was just gonna say that uh, in the interest of sticking true to what, uh, what uh, Sulak initially said, she's actually gonna take the long way around, and because, you know, we were told about the metal air. Yes. You kind of had planned so... to go there anyway, so we can do a exactly. pin we can do a pincer movement. Yeah. <laughs> Which was like, I know, seeing <laughs> you? Yeah. Why I walk hope down they the try to run. tunnel with, you know, a bad back when I can just walk through the front door and intimidate Wonderful. Um... That is true. I, I also made it very clear that I did not want to go in that tunnel. So, that... <laughs> I have very nice boots on, and I'm not going to ruin that. Today. That's wonderful. No. Okay. Um, so, I will cut back to you once I know what the rest of mm -hmm. our uh, the tunnel babies mm -hmm. are doing. <laughs> tunnel babies! We had a hydrate redeemed. Uh, yeah, Cal, Cal and Dubois, um, is there anything you want to do? Uh, I'm. You'll have seen Falling Feather cast this spell, so you know not to, like, immediately leap out, but you can wait in the tunnel if you want, or, I mean, you can get out and look around hmm. like my head out like trying to like not fully out so it's not but like keep, keep eye level like this eye level yeah like i'm like i can't <laughs> tell if i'm above my captions you're not, not above your captions you're gone. there perfect uh, perfect um i once again grab my cat by the leather jacket <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. Grab my cat by the leather jacket. And <laughs> thank you, Major Tomorrow, for the 108 bits. Thank you for all these anonymous subs. Ooh, I'm so bit. grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting us. That's very nice that you're here. Nice. Um, so, uh, through your cat's eyes uh, and... Yeah, periscoping. Uh, and uh, and Cal. So we have like a cat above Cal's head and then Cal's head just poking. It's very cartoonish setup here. Love it. Um, you, you see a uh, you see a forge that has it's very clean for a forge. Um, there is There are black smoke stains on the ceiling but this place is kept in order. There are very very neat tools and there are like four anvils around a huge fire pit in the middle and three of the anvils are being worked at and then there is one uh dwarf woman walking around she has a long uh brunette beard in a beautiful braid kind of slung over her shoulder um and a big brunette uh, mohawk braid down her back and she's kind of blustering um and talking to everyone it's like uh, you know, while these three clearly apprentices, they're quite a bit younger, are working, she's just, like, uh, complaining non-stop about, like, uh, uh, is she complaining or is she bragging? I think she's actually probably bragging about, uh, about, uh, Heart, Heart Singer, and she's like, I can't believe we got to make such a sword here. I'm so honored. But I won't have this name, the name of Metal AF, be besmirched by petty crimes. And she's just like striding up and down around the aisles. Um, with, the, with her speaking, are there any of like the apprentices that are reacting in a particular way to what to her words? Um, one of them is kind of side eyeing her and kind of like rolling her eyes and shaking their head. Um, roll an insight okay. check for me, if you will. Can you definitely do that? Ooh, uh, might I also do an insight yes, check? Yes, you might indeed. You have two crit successes. I have two? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you, you have, have two. You have an, adva an advantage in a crit success, I believe. Okay. Oh, yeah, you have an advantage in a crit success. Yeah, <laughs> so um, you can roll this one with advantage. 
It's just the people at the front that can do it because they're the only ones that can see you. You are casting a spell for ten minutes, so unless you want to stop oh, yes, casting I a am. spell, thank you for reminding me. That's okay. Uh, Don't you I, worry. I rolled, uh, I rolled a nineteen. A nineteen for you, and with... I'll, I'll take the twenty. Sure. You can take the twenty. Hell yeah. <laughs> what um, could go wrong? Um. So so with the nineteen, you get the impression that this she's probably been bl talking about the sword all week or month and her apprentices are tired and they're looking a little <laughs> overworked and they're a bit bored of her going on and on and on about it now but the one that was mm -hmm. rolling its eyes cal you immediately you've worked you know you've checked on your workers down in the mines you can tell when someone is acting like they did more than they did on that day you know you've you've been mm -hmm. a you've been a good manager to some of your uh, family members and friends down there you can tell when someone is overstating their achievements and that is why the sigh and the eye roll and then i'm gonna say with your 20 dubois dubois even over the clanging of hammers the pounding breath of the bellows you hear the one that rolled their eyes under their breath be like Psh. Yeah, it was all our three is work, but whatever. Um, I will type the name I said into chat. Drama. <laughs> Arthuria, you said. Arthuria. Yeah, it was all Arthuria's work. Noted. Um. Uh. Yeah. So the cat passes that back on to you in its beautiful, <laughs> suave, charming voice. Um. <laughs> Can I roll something to see if I know who Arthuria is? Or is that just one of the apprentices? Um, how long have you been in town? Oh, um... A couple days? A couple weeks? Uh, probably, like, a week. A week, okay. Uh, also, Falling Feather, you have your hand up. I actually have a feature that might be very relevant. I know background features are usually not useful, mm -hmm. but as an urban bounty hunter, my feature is Ear to the Ground, uh, where I have frequent contact with people uh, who are my quarries. So, like, if, if okay. there's any, like, sort of, um, like, uh, humans or goblins, like, would get their weapons from here, or, like, yeah. who are pretty working class, I might know who Arthuria is. Okay, so you can both roll charisma checks, because this is you knowing people. Mm -hmm. So this is Ooh. how well have you schmoozed your way around knowing people. So both roll me a charisma check, see if you know who Arthur is. That's that one. That's <laughs> one. Um, My luck has turned around. I have gotten a 19. A 19. Okay. So having been in town for a week, you've visited different taverns you've wandered through the market square you've been chatting people up you've been making friends and sometimes more than friends with folks in the town as i believe is dubois dubois way uh oh absolutely yeah um and uh you've heard the name arthuria she you kind of scan back through your mind. You kind of look at Fallen Feather, like raising one eyebrow, and Fallen Feather, Fallen Feather just kind of shrugs. <laughs> um, and uh, you remember that there is a tiefling that works at this forge, who is, who. So you were speaking to someone who kept showing off their daggers to you, and the drunker they got, the more they kept re-showing you their daggers, being like, "Look at the quality! Look at the quality!" Um, and they were oh. they ended up being quite a bore but you do remember they kept saying yes this is Arthuria's handiwork she's the best smith at metal af <laughs> i just imagine dubois just being like that's real cool buddy um uh, uh, <laughs> and you would know from this she is a tiefling um because they said something oh. about like i will her 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 heritage means she can handle the heat of the forge like no one else. You know, she's kind of would those that, vibes. Would she happen to have a maybe red tail? Perhaps, perhaps, yes. Oh. <laughs> that part of thickens. How the tables have tabled. Um. So I have a que <laughs> So I have a question for you. Oh, so, so as this is all wrapping together and you are all putting the pieces in place, uh, wits. Spellcasting slowly comes to an end, um, and Wit's familiar is summoned. Uh, what does your familiar look like, Wit? It's a raven with uh, green eyes, and his name is Thanatos. 
wonderful. And Iconic I... behavior, can I just say? Iconic <laughs> behavior. And um, San, San... Uh, Falling Feather is just... <laughs> <laughs> Mine. <laughs> um, and so you are all just like getting ready so you're kind of like thinking like well what next where are the others just as you're piecing you know these puzzle pieces are falling into place you're that like charlie from always sunny gif where you're like you've got all these strings and notes (laughs) um and you hear these two voices outside like you hear a door swing open and the dwarf lady's voice be like ah customers greetings oh goliath under well you! <laughs> <laughs> Looking at Zelfarin. I'm dead. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh, you look very good for someone that's dead. Very, very good indeed. Very put together. And I she want on a shirt. shakes like sooty, <laughs> huge hands at you. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you, you four hear your party mates arrive upstairs. What would you like to do, gang? I kind of turn back to the others of like, do, do we, do we, do, 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 do. Can I, this is going to sound very strange. Can I send, because I think in backstory, uh, we established that Zulok and uh, Falling Fever had worked together. Yeah. Can I send my little swarm to perch on Zulok's shoulders? Smart. Yes, yes you yes. absolutely can. You're also in range of a message spell, so Dubois Dubois can also give you a little, hey. So, We're down here. <laughs> um, yeah, the ravens uh, f- f- flutter up from the ground. I'm gonna say unnoticed by the apprentices because that's the whole they're thing. Working. Uh, they're yeah, working. Yeah, they're hard. working really hard. Um, and two ravens you recognize land on your shoulders and one on your head. And the dwarf lady like laughs heartily and is like, "Oh, I see you have friends. I recognize adventurers when I see them. You must be some kind of ranger or druid." Um, please say you're not a druid. We don't work with wood here. <laughs> no, that'd be very dangerous. You're right. Yeah. I'm not either of those. But... Ah, okay. Thanks. No. Mm-hmm. So Luck's um... gonna note this, realize it means, okay, the others are somewhere, at least within sight, and then just in a, as loud a voice as possible go, Who is the master of this forge? <laughs> <laughs> Me? The forge is my pride and joy. Forging royal swords is our crowning achievement here. You've come to the right place for the right weapons. And then you were responsible for the sword that went missing. Missing? Missing? I'm not responsible for anything. If you created it, the sword is your responsibility until the day it is broken. Um, roll an intimidation check, okay. but Zelfarum, what yeah. do you want to say while this is being rolled? I was just going to say, um, yeah, you were, you were, I mean, you were at least responsible for its delivery, and I heard it was a little late. Is there a reason for that? Okay, yeah, so roll an intimidation for me, intimidation and we'll right add now. this to what Zelfarum is mm-hmm. saying. Cal is is down in the hole listening to to what is being said, just like <laughs> okay, like mouth again. Oh my god! What did you okay. get? Roll. Okay. Um, uh, hang on, let, let me double check because I can't remember my if I took proficiency mm-hmm. in this or no, I did not. Um, uh. Seven. A seven. Uh, she laughs heartily at you, and it's like, Haha, I've had adventurers try and treat me like this before. This is nothing new. And she, like, punches you on the shoulder, and you actually stagger back a step. She's clearly very strong and very used to, like, bullshitters. And she kind of uh, looks at you, one eyebrow raised, so far, and it's like, well, that's because, uh, well, uh, uh, we made what you usually unplanned make noble people. Who me? Yeah. Is this usually how you speak to your betters? Betters? You think you're better than me? Cal's jaw. I'd like to see further. you forge like... a sword the way I can forge a sword. <laughs> and she kind of steps forwards, and her hands are like well, clenched at her side. Why don't you show us how you forge a sword? Um, <laughs> give us a demonstration, if you will. Roll a persuasion check to see if she will give you a free lesson in how to forge a sword. 
Oh, um, that's, that's actually, that's not bad. That's an 18. <laughs> She's like, huh. I'm basically, I'm basically just trying to get her to, like, okay, if you are the master forge worker here, just mm -hmm. show it, prove it. <laughs> Fine. Fine. You must be that kind of types. I don't quite like the cut of your jib. And she points one wide finger at Zelfarin. But I will show you my skills. And she, like, leads you into the back of the workshop and you see these three anvils and the one unoccupied one. And there are beautiful weapons lining the walls. She takes a few down and she also pulls out a raw hunk of metal and is like, witness me. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, <laughs> so she starts going to town, I guess. Um, it's ours. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I I don't know what the end game is here, but this is, you can be here for two days watching her if you want. You'll miss the <laughs> wedding. The main end game right now is to, in fact, get a massive distraction going so everyone else who is here somewhere, and Zulak doesn't know where, but can just kind of appear. Okay, I will say, with this distraction, it's actually going off really well. The three apprentices are finding it very, like, funny, amusing, a little bit scary. What's going on? They're not sure who you two crazy people are that have rocked up at the shop, but this is the most exciting thing that's potentially happened since the sword left the premises. And so uh, they all mill over, and I would say, yeah, you've created an opening for all of you to climb out the hole if you want, as long as you remember to step yes, around that snare. Uh, I yeah. was actually going to cast message to mm -hmm. uh, Zell... Zelfarin. Zelfarin. Zelfarin, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so you just hear Dubois' voice in your head. Hello, my decomposing friend. Um, just wanted to touch base, see if you've gained any information about anything important or anything. Just wanna... Also, we're like directly below the forge. Oh. <laughs> so we can like kind of whisper to each other if we really wanted to, but that's fine. Um, there's a... Um... Uh, th th we found out that the thief has a tail, and that tail is red. Also oh. came straight in. Kind of an ambush. Well done. What a convenience. Conven... Con the words are hard. Coincidence. Uh, <laughs> coincidence. What a convenience. Um... <laughs> what a convenient coincidence. No, I was said that, and Wit just leans over and goes, it's, it's, uh... And <laughs> <laughs> um, we also got a posture check if you need to do a little stretchy. Oh, look, fine. Wiggle and do one. <laughs> um. <laughs> mm. So you're saying what a coincidence? Uh, and... Coincidence, yeah. Um, there is one of the apprentices. It, 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 why can't I talk all of a sudden? <laughs> one of the apprentices is a tiefling. Do you ever know her name? Or their Ar name? Ar they don't Ar know their... Arthuria? Arthuria. Wonderful. Oh, you're... Th I'm gonna say this out loud to the, uh, the smith who's working. Mm. Oh, you're doing a great job. Um, although I have heard of another... Another who works just as well as you. Huh. Um, Unlikely. <laughs> I've heard around town the name Arthuria. Oh, Arthuria taught her everything she knows! Uh, she hasn't come in to work today, though, the little reprobate. Uh, and she kind of gestures to the empty station. We could have used her hands on deck today. And then through puffing and panting, she's like, yeah, she's a skilled worker. And I'm grateful for her assistance, but she's always unfocused and takes much longer on her breaks than she should. <sighs> a girl spends too much time outdoors and, I don't know, hopelessly lost in silly fantasies. Uh, she's always keen to take on the tasks that make us deliver stuff out to the forest. Pfft. Don't know why. <laughs> wood, huh? And she like <laughs>, laughs at her own joke about wood again. <laughs> yes. yes, I can see why that would be terrible. <laughs> um, she she laughs heartily. She loves the pun. Uh, we got a hydrate redeem. Someone inside is dying and having said something so ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, oh god, the things I do, the things I do. I use um, prestidigitation to make a uh, bedim push. <laughs> <laughs> um, falling feather, hello. Uh, I would like to uh, sneak up, avoiding my own snare, and go to the and go to the one gossipy 
uh, mm -hmm. like making snide remarks, uh, apprentice, mm -hmm. and just be like, and just ask Arturia, <coughs> and then Sorry. like make the sound of like a door opening and like a key turning. Oh, Prue's dying. Oh no, oh, don't okay. do that. Prue, I was only joking about writing your obituary. Please. I know, okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, they hold up a finger, cough for a few seconds, as there's new smoke billowing out of the forge as this dwarf works like double time on this craft. And uh, and leans in and is like, sorry, what, what did you want to know? He, I draw like a, a house with my fingers. And then say oh. Arthuria. Uh, Arthuria? You're trying to find Arthuria? Oh. I don't know. She just didn't come in today. Um, but you do know something? She's got a secret uh. lover. Mm. Yeah, I know, right? Ugh. So, she's like always trying to prove herself. She's always trying to prove she's better than everyone else. And in all honesty, she's pretty... She is pretty good. She she didn't have the money to like go to wizard school and stuff, so she tries to work a little of her artificer magics into everything she makes and god, she's so good at it. And it caught the eye of this like gnome noble, uh, Quinn, and like Arthuria it like sneaks out to the woods because I think that's where they have their little trysts. And uh, mm, uh you know, uh, Arthuria is probably <coughs> Sick today, if you know what I mean. <laughs> are we uh, the ones of us in the hole able to to hear this conversation, or is it a bit too far away? And a bit I'd say quiet? yeah, you can. Um, would I? I... Can just, I can also just mimic it perfectly back. Oh yeah. yeah, you are like a little recording um, box. Do I? Do I know? Am I familiar with a a gnome noble named Quinn? Uh, a gnome uh, status of nobility. A gnome Do you have the, you. Do you have the noble background? Yeah. I do have the noble Okay, background. rather than roll for it, um, because there aren't heaps of nobles in this town, I will say yes, you have heard of Quinn. Um, there is, just let me make sure I get their description correct. So, Secret lover. <laughs> Secret lover. <laughs> I also appreciated uh, uh, Lex calling them a noble in noble. the chat. There we go. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you know of Quinn from the House Timaeus, so Quinn Timaeus. House Timaeus. Um, you've you've met them on occasion at like dinner parties. They've always seemed very mild mannered, very okay. polite, a little anxious, um, and knows that and like that you you've noticed this especially because their parents are quite like haughty, mm -hmm. and like they come across as a much softer, more gentler person than their haughty parents. Okay. Uh, I will... Forbidden. I will pass this on to the rest of us down in the hole, um, but all of the time, uh, Cal is just, like, eyes, like, po popping out of his head, like, oh my god! This is such gossip! I love it! <laughs> it's um, fully inv invested. Uh, I'll pass it all on. Falling Fever is going to talk to this... What uh, is going to talk to this apprentice and be and point to a little snare thing and yeah. point to the boss and then uh -huh. say point to her point to the snare and then just make a like a snake like a knot tying noise like a like I just do like there's a knot you made a you're gonna make the floor go up <laughs> oh the snare spell. You cast the snare spell over there. Could you dispel it? Like, I don't want to accidentally tread in that, you know? I, I point to the boss, uh, yeah. and I give a thumbs down, because I don't like her. <laughs> oh, you know what? It would be a funny prank. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let the others know. And she, like, begins to, like, wander around and, like, elbow the other apprentices and, like, lean in and whisper in their ears. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Falling Fever, uh, just plops right back down in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> you all can come out of the hole. A, a distraction yeah. was created yeah. where you can if you want. Uh, 
You don't have to, but it would mean going all the way back up to the castle and back out if you wanted to leave. Yeah, let's stay outside of the hole. <laughs> yeah, if we can, yeah. if we can yeah. find a way to like quietly get out of the hole and avoid the snare spell, then um, yeah. Uh, I mean, while, while the boss is busy clanging and hammering away, Sulak is just yelling in the gruffest, loudest Goliath voice that she yeah, can Yeah, okay, so everyone everyone clambering out the hole. We've already had Falling Feather clamber out, so we will leave that, but uh, the the other three of you make stealth checks at advantage, and I think Cal probably makes this plain, because Cal is in, yeah, like, clanky I'm in, armor. I'm in plate armor, yep. Um, uh, Wit rolled a 21. You slither into the room, and it looks like you came from the front door. No yep. one's sure how you did it. I... But how big my Cal... wings are. Cal rolled a 16! Ooh. Ooh. Oh yeah, the clanging of your armor just sounds like the clanging of the hammers in this room. And... I time every step <laughs> with a hammer swing. Perfect. So, it's beautiful. Like... And uh, Dubois Dubois, my dear. With advantage, I got a 1 and a 2. Oh, ah! honey! Oh, no. <laughs> it's the curse! Uh... <laughs> And is there oh, no more wait, to that? Wait, 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 can I retcon something real quick? Yeah. Uh oh. Um, I, by the way. I'm an uh as an earth ganassi, I have uh a, I have merge with stone. Uh, and we're in a stone tunnel, and I'm able to cast Pass Without a Trace once a day. Can oh, nice! Yeah, you absolutely can have done that. Yes, perfect. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> so you actually get a, a 12. Dubois, Dubois. Cal has a 26. Uh, <laughs> So with that, it's a grand total of uh, 15. Wonderful. Yeah. So you That's all one. kind of slip into the shadows of the, you're kind of enveloped by the shadows of the tunnel. And then every time you move, a shadow seems to move with you and cling to you until you're all positioned around the forge. And uh, our, uh, our uh, dwarf lady uh, looks up and it's like, huh, an audience. I told you I was good, and she smacks her chest again. Uh, I I make a clicking noise and point to the hole, <laughs> and just be like, oh, <gasps> just sort of like, <laughs> what? How'd that get there? Forge master, it appears that your shop is pretty ransacked. What? The forge has been compromised. And she like storms over and is gonna go look directly down the hole. And she treads on that floorboard. And just as she's about to look down into it, there's a sh -sh -sh whoop. <laughs> and she's dangling from both legs by the ceiling, her long beard flopping over her face, her long hair brushing the ground. And she's like, oh, what you call this? What's going on here? Just, I, I'm just, um... Sorry, go ahead, go ahead. So Silas just looks up, looks at the door, looks up again, just goes, Yeah, that's my cue. Ciao. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just uses um, Mage Hand to gently pet Falling Feather on the head and is like, Good job. And also leaves. <laughs> um, is everybody heading uh, out? Falling Feather uh, pulls out like. Uh, <laughs> pulls out his like little business card for bounty hunters to figure out who did does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh and then uh fakes like untying the person uh and getting them down. <laughs> oh actually speaking hang on, as we are leaving, mm -hmm. um, I have to ask, are any goods on display at the moment? Oh yeah plenty. Um, There's uh, loads on the walls. Okay. Uh I would like to make a sleight of hand check just to I mean, yeah, go ahead. See if you can snaffle a nice rapier or something. Yeah, just the, you know, maybe a nice second one to go with what I've already got. Good rolls! Uh, and that is something I have expertise in, which I think puts it at 23, but let me double check. Cool. Nope, that was not the expertise, which means it's just a 19. A 19, yeah, yeah but 19. you do, you do, uh, uh, unless anybody in the group's passive perceptions are higher than a 19, which I don't think they are. You manage to slither this rapier off the wall as you leave and slide it into your uh, uh, hip. Uh... She's got a cloak. Yeah, um, I'm going to say add a plus one rapier to your inventory. <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> um, uh, uh, so far, and I saw that you were uh, going to speak to. Yeah, um, sorry. Sorry about this mess. Oh, wow, this is horrible. Uh, anyway. Um... 
Would you happen to know where she, you guys were delivering those uh, swords to in the forest or whatever? Um, of course you would know. Could you just tell me where that was? Uh, 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 have you cut her down, Falling Feather? Uh, yeah, I cut her down, uh, which I play like I'm untying something, but really just dispel the spell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so you, you cut her down and she like looks, she kind of flops her hair back and tucks in her beard and kind of looks up at you. Um, and she holds out a hand for you to help her get to her feet. Um, while you're asking her that, do you want to help her up, Zalcaran? Yeah, cool. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, she's like, oh, well, it's about a, uh, uh, the most recent delivery in the forest. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to know, but if you need recommendations of our work, there's a there's a there's a place uh, about twenty minutes or so out into the forest. You kind of head. Northeast, where I know uh, 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 Arthuria often likes to do, you know, handoffs for safety rather than going door to door in, in, in a dark, scary forest. So perhaps if you're looking to inquire about my wares secondhand, you could head out there. That sounds great. Thank you so much. I hope Thank I you. wish you all the luck with the repairs and everything. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Bye okay, guys. um. Th thanks. Uh, she's she like is so confused. This poor woman. She's she had this is the weirdest day of her life. <laughs> Listen, I uh, I uh I I just like leave like a union uh like a union like rules sheet in front of the apprentices just to be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> she is not a good boss. <laughs> can I and can I can I also leave a um like. Uh, I don't know, like a flyer for uh, the the Iron Ward forgeries, uh, the Iron yeah, Ward forges absolutely. on the table. So we've we've left a little pile of flyers, uh, a bounty hunter business card, a flyer for the Iron Ward forgeries, like a recruitment flyer, and long unionizing documentation, all <laughs> all left like with the uh, with the like very gossipy apprentice, and she kind of like raises her eyebrows and begins to flick through the stuff. And is immediately like kind of absorbed. It's going in. I should also mention to the. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I should also mention to the the forge woman. Like, oh, by the way, you should wash your hand undead. It's a little. Oh. oh, it's a little oh, oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. I wasn't intent. I mean, you asked for. It's fine. All right. Bye. Du bois, du bois. I go up to the boss lady. He's like, yeah, I had nothing to do with any of this. Uh, mm -hmm. I was gonna ask for a sword at some point um oh you want to sail so, you could have a sword yes uh, what you looking for i meant later uh oh uh, yeah uh, come come back i'm i'm, I'm so Pro sorry about the nonsense in the shop today yeah i'm in the middle of like a one shot right now so i don't have a time <laughs> like, oh okay yeah um i'm not sure what that means but i'm sure you are on a time cruncher uh, so see you around <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, and I assume everybody has, like, left the shop and is maybe gathered in, like, the city square? Mm -hmm. Kind yeah, of thing, yeah. just outside? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, there was a town uh, map to go with this that you didn't need because you went through an underground tunnel, but I will show you it for the sake of showing you it. Hey. Um. Secret um. Whoa. Secret tunnel. Um. Through the castle. <laughs> So you now know, um, I will retcon and say I said 20 minutes. Uh, she probably actually said an hour into the forest. I apologize, that was my mistake. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so you gather in the town square. There's, it's a bright and bustling place. There's an ornate fountain in the shape of a peacock dominating the center. It stands majestically above a pool with thousands of copper coins shimmering at the bottom. And there are a couple of notice boards around the, around the square. And you will kind of gather at the edge of this fountain, some of you sitting on its lip, some of you standing, um, uh, lazing on public benches. Uh, what is the plan of action next, gang? Uh, Cal will share the the thing about Quinn and and the knowledge of the, the nobility that he shares to, to everybody. Mm -hmm. And I... And Zafarian will also share what they know about the, but what he knows about the, where we would go to find possibly mm -hmm. Arthuria. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, so do you think we should, I guess, go to the forest then? I think this all seems to be coming together wonderfully. 
Who fancies a walk in the forest? The thick plot. <laughs> oh, oh. I'm not wearing the shoes. Falling further, right. sorry. Okay. I just... Forest, forest, forest. Aww. Mm. I know you like the forest. <sighs> so, my sweets. Well, these have more valuables. <laughs> sure, let's go. Uh, you head out of town. Um, as as we're as we're heading off, uh, Cal, <laughs> I can't believe I'm embarrassed to do this, but Cal thinks it's great. We'll pull out his longsword and point it like in the air in the direction he thinks the forest is. And we'll just go onward, and then look quite embarrassed and just put his sword away. <laughs> I turn <laughs> Cal. I turn Cal like 180 degrees. That way. <laughs> <laughs> I like point back up. towards the castle. <laughs> so that's gonna pull out the. Newly acquired rapier, look at it, just cross blades with you dramatically. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Cal uh, is very happy. That's the name of the one shot. <laughs> <laughs> we named what? the title of the episode in the episode. Well done, we did it. We reached peak DD. Roll Stream's credits. over. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, there was actually a dragon inside a dungeon. We win. Can I have just a group survival <laughs> check? So everyone roll me a survival. Good thing I have expertise. Nice. Can I can I have the can I have my familiar kind of like scout ahead above us? Yeah, you can take advantage for two people with familiars. You can take advantage for that. Yeah. That one for a total of eight. Oh no. Cal, Cal rolled a four for a total of four. Fifteen, eight, four. Yeah. Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Bringing up the average. And for the record. I hadn't realized there. what I was doing with the whole episode title. I just thought it seemed like a cool moment. It was a cool moment. It was very cool. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so far, I don't do what I'm so, so sorry. It's okay. Don't be once sorry. Once again, I rolled advantage and got a nat one and a ten. So <laughs> total yeah. ten. Okay. I every roll but like one has had a nat one in it. Oh, buddy. Uh, got a twenty-two. So, a 22! Hey! Got that zombie strength. Just that not just, you know. Mind strength? I don't know what the hell I was just saying. The, <laughs> the spig smarts. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, uh, some of you are kind of wandering blind, just happy to let, uh, uh, Zelfarin and Sulak lead the way. Dubois also occasionally spots, uh, no, not Sulak, sorry. Uh, Wit, I think, was the one that rolled high. I apologize. So, so Wit and Zelfarin um, put their... No, it was... It was, um, it was uh, sorry, uh, what's the... It was Sulak. It was Sulak, okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So Zelfarin and Sulak, the wonderful duo that they have become, kind of end up leading the way. You spot uh, turned over bit, you know, uh, 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 for, for about 40 minutes you follow the path. And then you see snap twigs, uh, a little bit of black cloak snagged on a bramble, uh, and uh, uh, f footsteps clearly traipsing through the long grass, and um, uh, a few speckles of that rust-coloured liquid that Falling Feather has come to know as blood. <laughs> blood. Um, uh, uh, and uh, you, you together with uh, Dubois, occasionally spotting the odd thing that you don't, um, uh, manage to find uh, uh, your way. And after about an hour of walking, suddenly you hear the clashing of weapons and shouts. You reach a clearing in the forest and see several people in the center. Du -du 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 -du. Boop. Ooh. A map. A map. Um, Um, Ooh, battle music. <laughs> um, uh, there's a hooded figure with their back to you and a red tail poking out from under their black cloak. A well-dressed gnome cowers behind a, a tumble-down uh, hut um, with something glimmering in their hands. A couple of other people wearing black and several other figures wearing red hooded cloaks. They all have their weapons drawn and the person in black with the, with the red tail is fighting three people at once. The gnome isn't fighting, but more cowering and looking concerned. Um, what would you like to do? Can um, I cast Mage Armor? 
Or... Oh yeah, you can cast okay. mage armor. We're not we're not diving in yet until uh, until you make the call to, or you might be able to defuse it. You never know. It's D and D, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cast. I'm gonna develop an immediate crush on the person fighting three people. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, I uh, go ahead. I check. I was a second, uh, so like we'll immediately try to find the nearest bush, pull like a, you know a leaf-covered cloak over, and try to blend in and go stealth, and hopefully catch yeah. whoever's. You roll stealth for me. Uh, we have a mage armor cast. Uh, we had someone else wanting to cast something. Dubois, Dubois. False life. Okay, Ooh. yeah, you you neck that little shotty that is false life's material <laughs> component. Okay. You neck that shotty. Um, <laughs> that's shots, shots, that's shots. why false life is one of my favorite spells because you can just be like, I take a swig of my rum. I I'm feeling I never emboldened. noticed until right now <laughs> that its component was holy shit. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it suits Dubois Dubois perfectly. Um, we also have falling feather wanting to do something. Falling feather, what was it you wanted to do? Uh, how many of those? Let's see, how many of those red dots can I get in a 20-foot square? You can probably get Ooh. these oh. four. Looks like I can get those four. In that case, I'm going to get those four uh, in Entangle. Okay, so Ooh. if we're triggering an Entangle, I'm going to say the actions you're doing now cast as your surprise around actions for the sake of convenience, and I would like everyone to please roll initiative. Um, quickly, Brew, just because I'm Law Master, I'm using Intelligence for Initiative, just in case you like. Yeah, that's totally stuff. fine. I got you. That is a 16. Ah! Uh. That is an 18. Uh. Uh. On both myself and my initiative. Uh, can everyone just type their initiatives in chat for me? That would make my yeah. life very Yo. easy. In the roll 20? Yeah. Hmm. One second. I just realized why I thought the sound was high. Ignore me. <laughs> um. So. gonna need a bigger bird. <laughs> so we have a 14. What did Whip get? A 16. Whip pots. Well, yeah, it's okay, don't worry, I'm thinking out loud. Uh, oh, okay, think sorry, of sorry. think about uh, what you might want to do on your turns just while I type these in. Excuse yep. me. Uh, do Five. Cow. An 11. Uh, Got a. So far, what did you get? A nine. I got you. Uh, and give me one moment to just open up this book. How's everybody feeling? <laughs> I'm good. Not good. Excited. Let's go. Oh, I, I have a shiny new rapier then. Hoping to put to good use. Yes. Picking things off the I'm walls of fancy blacksmiths is a good idea. Uh, my uh, first ever time in a combat as a paladin, so this is going to be interesting. Awesome. I'm so proud of so you. I've never played you... a paladin before, this is interesting. We just put you in the front and then stand <laughs> behind you, poking between your arms. You I go catch. whack him! You I'm the first knight after you hit, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Or if you're a cleric, you can do the same with the channel of divinity, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. I got a bunch of healing as well. It's all good. 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 Which is still mean... hurt when we got hit in the head by the first. Oh, yeah, you yeah. all are. Yeah, I yeah. remember. I'm gonna need that healing because Sulak is a Goliath, but she's a Goliath with a negative one constitution modifier. So oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Fifteen. So, so you get a surprise round on everyone that is. 
an NPC in this, so uh, we skip this person's turn. Sulak uh, stealths into the uh, shadows of the trees. Um, because you're a rogue, that means you can use a bonus action to hide, so do you want to use your action to do anything? Um... Can I reverse that then? Can I basically have the like, toss the dagger and then do a hide? Because yeah. I'm forgetting I can do that. Yeah, absolutely, you can do that. Um, so you're throwing a dagger, roll to hit. Can I just say that was really creepy music box that just oh, went off scared the that hell out of me. <laughs> uh, you have to do it at disadvantage because there's no one within 20 feet and the range of a dagger is 20 feet. I dislike that, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Yeah. Uh, at Disadvantage, that's a uh, 12 points, so that is a... What was... Attack. Um, Sorry. <laughs> that... Do I have two tokens? I have two tokens. You do. I don't know which is the right one. Um, <laughs> so, wait, I can figure it out. I can figure out which is the right, right one. Am I just doing this here? Okay, cool. There's Dubois and there's Dubois over there. Uh, right. So what are you struggling with, Diane? Uh, I didn't put the dagger in my list of equip items, so... What's your dex mod? Dagger, um, it's two, so, so basically it's a 16 to hit. A 16 to hit. Uh, so who, who are you so throwing the dagger at? Can you ping them for me? The nearest one. That yeah, one. great, okay. Um, so you roll a, a 16, cuts through the lever armor, and you see this dagger stab into like the lower back of this uh, bandit here, and he lets out a Wah! and uh, and uh, collapses to the ground. <laughs> um, I'm running the bandits as minions, uh, which basically okay. means if you hit them, they die. That's fair. I was hoping to roll sneak attack damage, but we'll work on that. There yeah, is more the than just bandits. There is this also slightly different looking bandit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, you can roll sneak attack damage if you want, though, to get the, uh... Oh, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Lord, we've got Bandit and Chunky Bandit. Beefy Bandit. <laughs> Beefy Bandit. Oh, thick Lord, beef. he coming. He thick Bandit. Um, so we have... Uh, it, uh, and then you rolled an 18 on the stealth, right? Perfect. Yes. So you disappear into the shadows under the tree. Um, and next up we have Whip casting Mage Armor. Um, what, what else? Whip, anything else? Yep. No, I think that's all I can do at the moment. Sweet! So, bump that AC up. You're gonna be uh, a tricky one to hit. Fallen Feather uh, casting Entangle, I believe? Yes, it's a DC 13 strength save where all restrained for a duration of spell, which is a minute concentration. So they need to make a what save, sorry? Strength save. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, uh, the the bandit uh, Capitan got a dirty 20, but all of the bandits failed that. Oh, <laughs> so no. they are, so all of the like guys in the running position, these ones are, uh, are restrained. Uh, I will add a little effect marker. I'll add and, a little net. Can I move as well? Or... Yes, you can move. And you can take a bonus action if you want. Six. Let's go there. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, and I'll just. Uh, I'm trying to remember what my swarm can actually. No, they all happen in concurrence with my uh, attacks, so I am good. Okay, cool. I've moved your swarm next to you. They're all roosting in that tree you're stood under. Aww. Um, <laughs> uh, and next up, we have uh, someone who's not in the surprise round. You hear a, what? Who are you? Why are you here? Um, and then, uh, uh, Cal, it's your turn. Uh, Cal will draw their sword, um, and I'm going to take a few steps forward mm -hmm. to about here. And as I do, I'm going to cast bless on Zelfarin, Falling Feather, and who's another on Sunak, uh, Sunak. So Sonic. Sunak, Zelfarin, and F Falling Feather. I believe it might be a creature you can see, and I'm gonna... Oh, I can't see. I can't see her. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll put like, it... if you want to give it to Sunak, I'll just let you, though, because it's you helping an ally out, but just... For RP yeah, noise. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, for, for, for spell purposes, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do Falling Feather, Zelfarin, and myself. 
Okay. Uh, as, as melee peeps. So uh, you... And I'm, I'm concentrating on so that. So that you all know, you all get a d4 uh, to uh, attack, an attack roll or saving throw once per round, right? Yes. Uh, is it once uh, per or round? Or is it every, every single every one? Turn. It's constant. It's constant. Yeah, Sick. It's you can all long add as long as I'm to it. On it. Uh, you hear a... You hear a... <gasps> Barry, no! As this person falls <laughs> to the ground. Um, Zelfarin, it's your turn. Great. I take off my, my very expensive rings and put them in my pockets. Um, and then I'm going to rage. Um, yay! Yay! I completely um, forgot you were a barbarian. Yeah. <laughs> so uncivilized, but I hate it. Um, I'm, st I'm more raging that I have to rage than I am at anything else. Um, and I, I choose... Um, I'm, I think it's Path of the Beast, I think it's called. So from the Beast, yeah. I'm going to use Claws. Um, and then I'm going to move uh, six. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then I'm gonna attack this one right here. Yeah. Um, you roll cool. with advantage because they're restrained. Yep. And I get two of those attacks too. So let's see. Here. That's neat. How did you? How, uh, can I ask how you get two? Uh, from the beast's claws. Ah, got they you, got give you. me. Uh, yep. Sweet. I rolled one of them. I can't see it. I got a ten on the first one. Uh, these are both uh, with advantage good, though because yep, they're restrained. True. So let's see if you can get. And you add a d add a d four to each of them as well. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, oh no. So a nat 20 on the first one, and oh, fuck. a 25 on the second. So roll me that damage. Okay. Um, you... oh, um well, I can, uh, uh, so basically it's up to you. Would, you. would you all like to roll damage to feel how powerful you are? Or with the goons, would you like to just me to ask you, how would you like to do this? Just basically that, that's fine. Yeah, how would um, you like I'm... to do it? <laughs> Of course, I'm, I'm raging, so I can't control it, but I'm doing the best I can to keep the blood off my clothes, and I'm like, it's very disgusting to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, so, like, I'm using claws, so I guess I reach in and I, like, tear them apart, just in straight in half. Ooh! That. And this yeah. goon goes down. Yeah. Uh, Dubois, Dubois. Oh, God. Uh, you're muted, um, but you cast, you're casting False Life, but you're there more, it is. Do more than one thing. <laughs> Um, so, for, uh, my turn as a bonus action, I'm going to start, uh, what the hell is that called specifically? It is called a Blade Song. <gasps> so, <laughs> um, you see Dubois pull out his very gaudy, like, gold-plated rapier, mm -hmm. and the hilt is a microphone. Oh um, my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so he just like starts snapping and walking at them as he's singing. Oh my god! That's so good. Oh, and... <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Um, so is um, the starting of that a bonus action? Does anything else happen? Um, my AC goes up by two. Sweet. And I get plus two to any con saving throws. I totally forgot this, but I get extra 10 feet movement speed, which I almost missed entirely. Wonderful. Um, would you like to move, so then? I would love to move. I keep opening the wrong tab. Um, Emboldened so... by your song, you you dance into the battlefield. Right. Can I reach anybody? Uh, I can... If I, you like, can stand the... in this this uh, this dead guy's okay. face. He's on the floor. Okay, yeah, then I can, then I can get the there. Body. After being so expertly dispatched by Sulak. Uh, I'm having trouble moving the... No, I can move it. There you go. I got Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thanks, fam. And next is the big guy's go. And he uses... Oh, it's still have an action. <laughs> Are you not casting you false life? You said you were that casting false, false life. life. Oh, right, right, right. That was... You're right entirely. I forgot about that. <laughs> I got you. Um... Yeah, you took that sweet shot, my dude. Um... I... I'm going to have uh, this guy... Uh, uh, be like, hey, get in here, and uh, <laughs> and you see it, from it does count. It does count as difficult terrain, by the way. Yes, you see, uh, you see from these trees, uh, uh, oh, wow. uh, four goons emerge, um, oh, no. uh, oh. <laughs> and you see, uh, he he pulls up a scimitar and smiles. Um, uh, his red cloak billowing and is like 
We will take your sword and we will bring ruin to your nation. And he like sidesteps one step, kind of kicking through the brambles. And he basically gets three melee attacks, two oh with his scimitar God. and one with his dagger. So he's going to go for a scimitar on our two PCs and the dagger on our NPC. Um, uh, a nat 20 on a uh, poor little uh, falling feather, I apologize. A 14 plus 5, a 19 on Dubois Dubois, and a 15 on the NPC. Um, and that is for... Uh... Uh, doop, doop, doop. uh, six damage on falling feather. Uh, um, seven damage on Dubois Dubois, which seems unfair with the crit. Um, uh, and I was muted, but I said shield. Ah, you said shield. Nice. Cool. You throw up a shield as your reaction, and the shimmering wall of force appears in front of you, and his scimitar just kind of gets stuck in it for a second and then like bounces back out as magical force pushes it away and then this poor npc got dealt <laughs> seven damage um hey, and she uh, goes prove for uh i'm sorry yeah for sake of clarity i got a nat one in my concentration check and tangle drops oh no hey. i'm so sorry goodbye entangle uh and these goons are like yeah boss yeah boss you did it um, uh, they're also proud of boss, uh, and that's his go over. Um, it's Sulak's turn. Remembering to unmute myself is good. Sulak is going to um, uh, Well, bad things are happening, so Sulak is going to run right up, still using cover, so basically just going to more or less appear next to everyone else. Mm -hmm. You'll have advantage um, on this. Yes, um, and yeah, uh, just gonna make a straight up attack at this leader. Yeah, cool. Roll me two. With the rapier. So close to that 20, but that is a 22 to hit. Yeah, 22 hits. Okay, uh, now I have to figure out how much sneak attack damage I get because I have two. Sorry, level, for, two. level three rogues, that means 2d6. Two two, two d6, yeah. And I have that correct and set up perfectly. Uh, ooh. ooh, I like that. Uh, um, that's 15 points of damage. Nice! So, uh, yeah, it's just gonna ditch the cloak behind me, suddenly appear, lance forward with the rapier, and, well, actually, yeah, looking down because I'm a Goliath, just go, Die now! <laughs> and you see a flicker of fear in this man's eyes. <laughs> and then just retract the blade and stare at him. Um, uh, wonderful. Are you doing anything with your bonus action? Uh, no point in hiding. I'm in combat now. Great. Uh, Wit, it's your turn. Um, everyone seems to kind of be getting fucked up in one variety or another over here, so I'm going to stay where I am. Mm -hmm. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast magic missile at second level and aim one missile at each of the group. Nice. Uh, so you have four missiles and there are six goons on the board, so which six. four? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I, did, I scrolled down and saw the other two. Ah, okay, yeah, <laughs> we'll go for those top four you first yeah, pick yeah, then. The, yeah, for the They're in the trees! Oh wait, those go down quite quickly, don't they? Mm-hmm, they like... do. Oh, how, how hurt is the big guy looking? Uh, you'd maybe think he had, uh, three quarters of his health. Okay, I'm gonna. If do I was to put a number then. on it, I'd say 45 out of 60. But you know, okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm we're using gonna... scales out of 60 here. I'm gonna do oh. something else. I'm going to cast enlarge reduce on this gentleman, and using my law master spell secrets, I'm going to change that constitution saving throw to an intelligence saving throw. Okay, oh! wonderful. So he has to do an insane save to not get shrunked. Yeah. Okay, that's Make beautiful. Him teeny. I want to. Oh my on. God! He got an he got a twenty two. <laughs> no! Oh. I'm so sorry. He did. I got a twenty on my dice. I apologize. It's fine. He's yeah, like. You roll well. He points a finger at you and is like, 
I know your magics! Don't you shrink me! And he like flexes. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like okay. to do? Bonus action or movement? Um, I don't. I'm gonna I'm gonna move over thirty feet. I'm gonna move. I can move through this like forest stuff fine, right? Like it's not gonna. Yeah, it's trees, not difficult terrain. Right. I'm gonna run over to this little. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say anything because I've got other things in my mind. But that's my turn. Great. Perfect. Um, uh, and with that, it is Fallen Feathers go. Cal, you'll be up after Arthuria. Uh, Falling Feather has in one hand a scimitar and the other a short sword. Mm -hmm. And Falling Feather is is going to make with his one attack with his main action, one attack with his bonus action. Uh, that is a 18 and 24 to hit on the big guy. Uh, both hit, yes. Both pierce and through his leather through armor. I dive in like a whirling dervish of blades, and my ravens and crows swarm around me as well and start pecking at him as I dive in, adding another d6 of damage. So he's, this is nice. 3d6. I'm moving the swarm so around him. 3d6 plus 6 damage. 3d6 nice. plus Whoa. 6, perfect. Uh, that is uh, 19 damage. 19 damage, and he's like, Whoa, bloody birds! Get off me! Get off me! Who are you lot? Where have you come Ruin. from? Oh, oh, scary. <laughs> Echoing his own voice back at him. Yeah. I love that. He looks terrified. He's actually looking very shaken now after that stab to the guts and now these pecking birds, these omens and of death. And that's all I can do. And with that, it is uh, three years ago. And she like. I didn't even add blows. Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I you, you hit it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Add your blaze. Um, uh, Arthuria kind of uh, winks at Dubois. Dubois and is like, "Hey, I think you got this." And she kind of like does a little hop, skip, and backflip out of the way and takes disengage as a bonus action. And then she stands back here, and she casts. Um, uh, uh, a a firebolt at the goon in front of her. Uh, let's see what she rolls. Uh, the spellcasters recognize this little flame conjuring in her hand, and uh, yeah, she hits with a twenty-four. Um, and this fire kind of bursts in his in this in this goon's chest, and she's like flapping at him. He's like, oh, oh, get it off me, get it off me, no! And like <laughs> collapses to the ground, uh, and that goon is out of action. Uh, Cal, it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to run over to here, uh, and I'm gonna put my hand on Falling Feather's shoulder mm. uh, and say, now stay strong now, and I'm gonna use nine points of my Lay on Hands on Falling Feather. Nice. Uh, you gain you gain nine hit points, um, and then I'm going to run down to here uh, with the rest of my movement, and I'm going to look at all of the goons and draw my sword heroically. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. And that's that is my turn. I don't have any bonus actions yeah. I can do okay, right now. Cool. Um, I will say you took a quirky route round the tree, so you didn't provoke an attack of opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go like um, round. Far in. And with that, it is the goons' is goes. So these goons are like, huh, easy. And uh, these three all come up to you. <laughs> come on. Um, and hit me. they all try and hit you with their uh, with their scimitars. Uh, we got uh, two 13s and a 7. Uh, all miss. <laughs> How embarrassing for them. And these two, oh. seeing that happen, are like, oh, 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 we better stay back. Yeah, I don't want to get hurt. And they pull out uh, <laughs> they pull out crossbows and they like take aim at the barbarian on the field with their crossbows. Um, and they get a 19 and a 17. Um, they both hit. Um, and you oh, take... Yeah, and you would take 10 piercing damage, but in your rage and your undeathness, you simply brush these bolts off and only take 5. Because mm -hmm. of your lovely resistance. Um, 
And that is their go. It is Zelfarin's go. What would you like to do? Great. Um, I'm just gonna keep going at the, the big boy. I'm gonna rush him and uh, take my attacks. Cool. You can get uh, advantage for your uh, for, for flanking here. Wonderful. Um, so, one, two, three, four. Let's see what I got there. Did it work? No, it didn't work. Okay. 19. Uh, one of them is 26. Yeah, 26 <laughs> hits, yes. Ooh. Yeah, and the other one should roll. Why isn't it rolling? I'm not used to using D tw uh, roll 20. I'm That's sorry. okay, don't worry. You're all good. Uh, Are you the blessed and... one? Uh, you are blessed as well, blessed. so you can add a d4. There's a, a 26 and a 21 are both going to hit him, though, so... There we go. You'll cool. be all right. Great. Great, and then, uh, boom. Uh, six, seven, eight, uh, because I get two, because I'm raging, plus two on raging. Um, so that's eight damage plus roll, sir. And another one. Come on, there it is. Finally rolled. There we go. Eight, ten. So, uh, that'd be 18 damage. Okay. Sweet. Um... I changed the way I fight. It's more like a gourmet and, um, and, uh, took a ghoul. I'm just using <laughs> okay. like, like, ping him. And he's looking very, very unwell now, this, this big, uh, captain guy. Um, and is, like, shaking in his boots, like, and he's like, Where did you come from? You visages of hell! You undead things! Um... Hey... That's really rude. Rude. He is yeah, rude. pretty rude. Um, and Dubois, Dubois, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Um, let's see. No one's close enough for any of my other things, so I'm probably just going to stab the big man. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Roll to yeah. hit for me. Yeah, I can't get... Uh, burning hands without getting the paladin in there, and I like the paladin, so that's not gonna happen. Aww. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Like Aww. Uh, so the Bois is still singing and just kind of like dancing at the guy, mm -hmm. <laughs> and is gonna roll to attack with my rapier. Nice. Go ahead. Okay, oh, you get advantage because cool. of flanking as well. Oh, baby. Um, okay, cool. That's a lot better. Uh, <laughs> grand total. Uh, 20. Um, math is hard. 22. There we go. A 22. A 22 definitely hits. Roll me some damagio on this bandit captain. Roll some Joe oh. Dimaggio. Joe Dimaggio. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I went so far without making that. <laughs> it's like, fine. Just to, to make you feel better, as soon as I said that joke, my cat stuck her head into my bedroom door and just kind of yowled at me. <laughs> so I think she didn't like the joke. What what was the damage on that um, one for me? So grand total of ten damage as I just. Take my heart and please don't break it. Stab in the throat. <laughs> uh, and I would say you reach up, you stab him in the throat, and you perfectly hit that windpipe. Is that how you would like to do this? Oh. Yeah. Love was me <laughs> and you. <laughs> um, and he sinks to his knees, just like, kind of half singing along. You know, his final <laughs> moments, he's just en enraptured by you. Um, and, uh, yeah, with that, um, because... As, it, as he dies, I hit him, Sing him to sleep. Take it away! <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gurgling oh off. My <laughs> what a nice lullaby. Uh, Death rattle. Well, I will say, with, with this, because we've got to 9.30, and I know we need to end pretty cleanly here, um, uh, with some magic missiles, some wonderful paladin smites, with some extra quick sneak attacks, you manage to uh, get rid of the few that still seem want to attack. Uh, those that seem to want to run away, do you let them go or are you chasing them down? Um, Falling Fever will uh, get them in hopes that they have a bounty. Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's all I needed to know. Sulak is going to fleece them for purses and then not be interested. Yeah, in yeah, things. yeah. Sulak manages to um, get uh, like 20 silver out of this. Nice. Um, can I also okay. say um, 
that on the goons, um, all of Cal's attacks are non-lethal. Oh, uh, that is so sweet. Cal's not, Cal nice. is not killing anyone, and I would also, if possible, at some point in the, like, I want to pop a command on the Othuria. Uh, um, well, um, uh, uh, I unfortunately can't facilitate, like, big RP yeah, now. Yeah, cool, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, what would you like to command? Uh, halt. Yeah, okay. She, she stops. Um, and, you know, with this show of arcane and melee prowess from this gang, to, you know, um, beautiful arcane arcs spilling out from everyone, um, uh, and Wit crouching by this gnome. This gnome looks up at you, Wit, and it's like, um, oh, goodness, um, I, 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 I tried to get the guards to come because Arthuria made a big mistake and took the sword to prove to my family uh, that she's a, she's a, uh, she's a good girl, and... Uh, and uh, uh oh, oh, I'm not a sir. Uh, I apologise. Um, I, I, I don't go by a uh, 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 gender pronouns. Um, um, but, but please, please. Oh, oh, look, they tricked us. They, they were actually spies. They weren't guards. They were from the enemy nation. Um, and, and, and really, um, Arthuria was just trying to do her best. And Arthuria like holds out her wrists and is like, take me away if you must. And you know, you come to whatever agreement you do there. Feel free to. Picture the journey back to the city in your minds with Arthuria, the gnome, and this gorgeous glittering sword with a heart swept hilt and musical crossbars. And you are welcomed like the heroes you are. Um, people in the streets at first don't notice, then people realize what you've done, and there's slow claps. And then by the time you get to the get to the castle, people like whooping and cheering you. And I would just like to say as an epilogue, um, uh, uh, Ross is won over by this passionate love that Arthuria was showing for her partner and was like, I will not punish you. In fact, you are the best smith in the city. I would like to bequeath you as the new apprentice to my royal artificer. Yay. You will get full pay and dental. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and you all attend a beautiful wedding and as... Aww. The reception winds to a close and those of you that have imbibed feel that fuzzy warmth those of you that have tried your luck have with your heroes prowess managed to win a few hearts over you can't help but feel a slight discomfort as dubois dubois finishes the closing bars of l is for the way you look <laughs> at me and the two princes spend the whole night arm in arm happy smiling with the beautiful sword at Kylothian's hip. And you have saved the day. You have we saved the sword crossed lovers. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, I will do a real, real, real quick wrap up. Um, uh, and then uh, I will leave the stream going, but people that need to leave can leave. And this is just so that um, I don't keep people too long. But you have watched Chasing Tales playing a one shot from Transparent Games, uh, their quick start their Kickstarter launches on uh, Thursday. If you want to play this game or games like it, they are releasing an anthology of eight LGBTQIA plus D&D 5e one shots along with relationship mechanics that work well with that. So go and check out that Kickstarter, support it if you can. Go and at least give them a follow on Twitter if you don't have the funds or don't, yeah, you know, whatever. Just, just make sure you give Transparent Games your love because it's very kind of them to, to let us pre-play this and also give everyone here love i will be putting their socials in the chat and stuff but um yeah um we will do like an audio wrap up over the credits so that people that need to go off camera can go off camera and i just want to say thank you everyone for stopping thank you for the hype stopping by thank you for the hype train and thank you so much to my guests you all did really really great and i'm so sorry i had to rush that final combat i would have loved to get a few more cool epic killing blows in there i'm so sorry um and i'm really grateful that you all came along it's, it's it was really wonderful so thank you um and thank I'm, you for having us thank you very much for yeah, thank you for thank you bro. that's all right i'm gonna take us over to the bro. credits you can't see right now but i'm doing hot hands behind my camera oh, i'm gonna take us to the credits and leave our voices on so uh don't say anything you don't want the audience to hear. Um, <laughs> okay, bye everyone, visually. Bye. Oh, my.